ABC Sports presents the 1985 World Series from Royal Stadium in Kansas City. Game six, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas City Royals. In game five, Thursday night in St. Louis, the Royals took a two to one lead on this very close play at home plate. Jim Sundberg escaping the tag of Tom Nieto. And before the inning was over, Willie Wilson had driven in two more with his triple to the gap in right center. Casey led four to one. Meanwhile, Danny Jackson was brilliant. Another great pitching performance for the Royals. They won the game 6-1. to one. Cards lead the series 3-2 as the teams come back west. Folks, the weather on the beach on Maui can't be a whole lot better than it is in late October in Kansas City. Yesterday in the mid-70s, today about 70, tonight in the 60s. Just gorgeous as we get set for game six. Hi again, everyone. I'm Al Michaels. Everybody knows the story. The Cardinals have to win one. The Royals have to win two to take home the world championship. Kansas City staying alive and a very confident lot as they come back home. Now, if Kansas City wins tonight, it sets up a dream matchup tomorrow. Brett Saberhagen would be on the mound for Kansas City, and John Tudor would pitch for St. Louis. But first things first, tonight it's Lee Brandt against Danny Cox. And in retrospect, let's go back to the game in St. Louis on Thursday night. Game five and a tremendous performance sort of lost in this shuffle. Todd Worrell started the season in the minor leagues at Louisville under Jim Fregosi as a starting pitcher. They converted him in mid-year to the bullpen and here he is having been called up in late August the main man out of the bullpen now for the Cardinals and six consecutive strikeouts in game five Thursday night. Worrell came in to pitch in the sixth inning. The first man he faced was Buddy Biancalana. Then he struck Danny Jackson out. No surprise there. But then he really got it cranked up. Went to the top of the order and fanned Lonnie Smith to retire the side. And then began the seventh inning by striking out Willie Wilson. So that made it four in a row. And then George Brett for number five. And then into the record books with number six against Frank White. So Todd Worrell with two perfect innings, six strikeouts. I spoke with him earlier. Todd, your reflections, reaction now as to what you did the other night when you put your name in the record book. Well, I'll tell you, Al, I didn't know at the time what I had done. And I, got, I came off the field and went in the locker room after I was done pitching my two innings. And uh, one of the guys in the locker room came up to me when I was changing my top and said, hey, you know, congratulations. And I said, for what? You know, because we had in the game, the point, the our, our score hadn't changed any in the game. We were still behind 4-1. to one, And he said, you know, your six consecutive strikeouts tied a World Series record. And uh, I, I was really ecstatic about it um, after you told me. How do you view the irony of starting the season as a starting pitcher in the minor leagues and ending it as the main man out of the bullpen in the World Series? Well, I, I guess I kind of look at it as really finding my niche in the game. Uh, not, I don't really count myself as a failure as a starter because I had some great games as a starter. I just don't think I was consistent enough to pitch on the big league level as a starter and uh, you know I think in this game you find things that really fit your character your style of pitching and relief has done that for me and I've really fit in well to a groove I haven't had much of an adjustment and it's been fun for me it's made me aggressive on the mound and I, it's just um, I look back on it and it's almost like a, a dreamer and uh, you know something you wouldn't expect it just happened for me and it fit real well with my style of pitching. Probably about time to start calling him Goose Worrell. It may come down to him at the end. We'll have Reggie Jackson coming up when we come back to KC. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's cooked the Colonel's special way. Kentucky Fried Chicken. We do chicken right. And by the people at Merrill Lynch, whose resources and solutions make them a breed apart. Predicting the future is never a sure thing, but some people have a way of hitting the mark. Consider Merrill Lynch. In 79, it was said stocks were dead. We said they weren't. 
Later, hardly anyone saw the dawn of a new bull market in bonds. We did. Last year, others said high inflation would be back. We said it wouldn't, and recommended investing in financial assets. We called it the way we saw it and ended up being right because of one key reason. Our resources, they're unsurpassed by anyone. Bob. Hi, Tom. I just saw your client out there. OK, thanks. By the way, do you think he'll be surprised by your recommendation? Well, he's a smart man, and he knows our track record. To find out what Merrill Lynch is saying right now, call 1-900-210-1000. More resources, better solutions. Merrill Lynch people, a breed apart. Everyone who loves chicken nuggets is going to love this news. Hmm, except McDonald's. The news is that people who said they've ever tried Kentucky Nuggets and McDonald's Chicken Nuggets rated our Kentucky Nuggets higher on taste. Maybe it's our secret blend of 11 herbs and spices, or because ours are made by the chicken experts. Well, come see for yourself. We think everyone will love our nuggets. Everyone. Hmm, except McDonald's. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. An ABC News Brief brought to you by the fun ships of Carnival Cruise Lines. Now from Washington, Britt Hume. Good evening. President Reagan said today his talks with allies in the Soviet Union this week have left him more convinced than ever his arms control efforts are on the right track. And he challenged the Soviets to do more than just talk about disarmament at next month's superpower summit. There were big anti-nuclear demonstrations in Europe today. In London, some 80,000 demonstrators marched past the U.S. and Soviet embassies and staged a symbolic die-in. Humphrey the humpback whale is about five miles closer to home tonight. Federal marine officials managed to coax him that far down the Sacramento River, but now he's balking at passing under the Rio Vista Bridge. Now this. In the morning, in the evening, ain't we got fun? Fun. That's what makes Carnival Cruise Line the most popular cruise line in the world. Finally, the nation returns to standard time at 2 o'clock tomorrow morning, so don't forget to set your clocks back one hour. More later on the Weekend Report. Joined now by Reggie Jackson. Let's break it down to the basics. The Cardinals have to play 500 to win the championship. The Royals have to play 1,000. What do you think? Well, uh, you can say that if you want to, Al. You know, the Cardinals only had to play 333 baseball. Then it, now it's moved up to 500. Tomorrow they'll have to play 1,000 if it gets that far. Charlie Liebrandt gets a second chance. The Kansas City Royals attitude. When I was on the field during batting practice, they were kidding me about my pants being too long. I guess that shows you that they are a very relaxed ball club. They seem to play very well that way. They're a ball club that has not lost a ball game that they'd had to win all year long. We'll see if they can continue that tonight. The St. Louis Cardinals are a ball club that I watched during batting practice again. I saw a guy like Tito Lander behind in the bullpen, relaxing, getting his thoughts together. Tommy Herr getting his thoughts together, getting ready for back to batting practice. They know they were up three to one. They know it's now three to two. And they know that people will say, you guys lost the World Series. You guys, you guys blew the World Series. They have not hit. They feel as though they have not shown their true game yet. We'll see what happens tonight. Rolling predictions. What's your choice tonight? <laughs> tonight, I like Kansas City, and I look for a seventh game tomorrow. All right. Right now, let's go to the public address announcer here at Royal Stadium, Jack Layton. Glenn Campbell. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we won we're so gallantly streaming and the And the 
ABC's exclusive presentation of the World Series after this message and a word from your local station. Wake up! If you don't graduate, we're through. I'm bust. Here, revive with Vibrin. Vibrin? Helps wake you up. Government-appointed experts say it's safe, effective. Revive with Vibrin. <laughs> don't lose your cool. Put your throat on nice. Ice for a sore throat? Nice. Showers minor sore throat pain and cough with medicine for temporary relief. Absorbs heat and cools your throat. Feels slickery. Put your throat on nice. What secrets the Soviets know about us? Monday on ABC's World News Tonight. Something amazing happened to Bill and me at Club Med. It's the climate here, not the weather. The warm smile of good weather. The temperature's just right for two. Slowing down the pace together so you can finally catch up with you. That's how we got to know a couple we hadn't really known before. Ourselves. The perfect climate for body and soul. Grandmother's from the old country, so she really knows how food should taste. And even though I'm serving her new Chunking almond pork with delicious, authentically seasoned sauce, frankly, I'm a little nervous. Mmm, flavor of sauce just right. It's one of Chunking's new entrees, Grandmother. Ah, Chunking is new. Very delicious. New Chunking entrees. So good, even the experts love them. Three, four. Oh, how I long. Oh, wait. Ready. All right. Okay. Wait until he's ready. He, he, he marked it. Oh. One, two, three, four. Oh, how I long to be the girl I used to be. Fascinating rhythm. Oh, won't you stop picking on me? Rhythm, rhythm, rhythm. But you'll never hear that kind of rhythm on Magic 106. Magic 106. Magic what can't you hear on Magic 106? Guess they like the Pointer Sisters better. Who? Who? Tommy Lasorda series analysis after the movie. Recognized around the world as the leader in sports television, ABC Sports celebrating its 25th anniversary. ABC Sports presents the 1985 World Series. Live from Royal Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, it's the St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas City Royals in Game 6. ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Stroh's and Strohlight. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here by Chevrolet who invite you to live the style, performance and fun of Chevrolet in 86. By Good News and Good News Pivot Razors from Gillette, the essence of shaving. And by the people at Merrill Lynch whose resources and solutions make them a breed apart. Welcome to Kansas City for Game 6 of the 1985 World Series, and I think the Kansas City Royals have to feel pretty comfortable. Think about this. This is the fifth time in the last two weeks the Royals have come to a ballpark, and if they had lost, that would be the end of the season. They were down 3-1 to Toronto, came back to win the league championship series, and kept the World Series alive with a victory. So in effect, I suppose you could say, they have saved four match points already in 1985. They'll try for a fifth and send it to a seventh game tomorrow. On the subject of pitching, hard luck Charlie Liebrand goes to the mound. You remember last Sunday night he lost game two with that four-run Cardinal rally in the ninth inning. It goes all the way back, in fact, to the playoffs last year when he pitched brilliantly against Detroit in game three, only to lose one to nothing. And there was also a very heartbreaking loss in game four of the American League Championship Series two weeks ago tonight when he led Toronto one nothing going into the ninth inning and lost that one. Here's his reflections on that game. That was that was very frustrating. I thought that was uh, probably the worst defeat I'd ever had until uh, the game the other night, uh, game two. Uh, you know, to go into the ninth inning uh, with a one nothing lead and uh, it was the same type of situation. We went down three to one, and uh, at the time I thought it was uh, 
just the end of the world. It really crushed me. And then I find out that uh, there are tougher losses still yet ahead. And uh, losing game number two of this, the World Series was uh, awfully, awfully tough. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, sometimes things aren't meant to be. Uh, it's hard to say, but, uh, you know, I think my, my luck's due to change. Lebron had a shutout with two out of the ninth inning and Willie McGee at second base when Jack Clark singled to left field. McGee came in to score, but it was still two to one Royals with a tying run at first base. Then Tito Landrum, the batter, this soft fly ball off the end of the bat, fell for a double, putting runners at second and third. I asked Lebran if he expected to come out at this point. Well, no, I thought I really had pretty good success um, and pretty good stuff most of the night. Uh, even into the ninth inning, I thought my stuff was still good. Uh, I just couldn't get that last out. The Landrum blooped the ball down the right field line. It was a little tough luck, just a couple of feet inside the line. Uh, Clark really didn't hit his ball too hard. Uh, it had eyes between short and third, so I think Dick was still thinking on the lines that I still had pretty good stuff. I just couldn't make that key pitch to get us out of there. After Liebrandt walked Cedeno to load the bases, this double to left field by Terry Pendleton sent three Cardinals home, gave St. Louis a 4-2 victory. And I asked Liebrandt if there'd be any carryover effect tonight. Well, it was an awful frustrating loss uh, to pitch eight and two-thirds innings, uh, have a two-to-nothing lead with two outs, uh, and not be able to get that, that third out is awfully, awfully frustrating. But I've been able to put that behind me right now. I'm going to try to go out tonight and pitch the best ball game I can. Uh, put that behind me, not think about it. Uh, just uh, hopefully we'll play a good ball game, score some runs, and uh, things will turn out a little bit different for me. Jim Palmer joining us now. That's very much what you'd expect Lee Brandt to say. Can a pitcher really do that, though? I don't think you can put the, the kind of games that he's pitched out of your mind. I think the key point he made was, let's score some runs. But if he gets into the late innings with a one-run lead, he's probably going to uh, think of, do a little bit of thinking about what happened in his last two starts. Um, I think the thing that concerns me is the fact that he did throw about 140 pitches in that ball game, and he is a control pitcher, and if he's not sharp, he might have some problems. We've seen the St. Louis bullpen, and they've done a fantastic job. I think the big point to me tonight, uh, as we said before game five, is Hauser has to go with his whole bullpen. And if you get into the late innings, to whom is Dick Hauser going to go to? Who is he going to really bring in to uh, be the key man? I we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Well, let me turn now to Tim McCarver and talk about the other pitcher, Danny Cox. And you keep hearing a lot of whispering about Cox's elbow. What do you know? Well, Cardinal trainer Gene Gieselman told us before the ball game tonight that in 1982, Danny Cox, a bone spur, was discovered in the right elbow of Danny Cox as the Cardinals x-ray their pitchers every spring. Well, they x-rayed uh, Danny Cox again this spring, and they found the same bone spur, but it's more of an irritation than it is an injury. However, Danny Cox's best pitch is a slider, and when a pitcher throws a slider, there is this type of movement with the hand, and that causes a lot of stress and strain on the elbow. So consequently, Danny Cox going into today's uh, tonight's ball game could be bothered by that sore elbow, and if he is bothered by it, then his slider, his most effective pitch, won't be used. And I find that very disturbing if I were the Cardinal manager, Whitey Herzog. So it's a rematch of game two, Lee Brandt against Cox, as we get set for game six. And let's join Jack Layton again. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to direct your attention to the Royals' dugout area. Baseball is proud to have with us, throwing out the first ball for tonight's World Series game, America's first woman in space. She is accompanied tonight by her husband, Steve Hawley of Salina, Kansas, also an astronaut who will make his first trip into space this winter. How about a big welcome for astronaut Sally Ride. <laughs> Sally, we await your first pitch. Thank you, Sally. We are honored to have you with us tonight. Danny Cox finished warming up. He makes his way in. Charlie Liebrandt to work for the Royals. Game six of the World Series coming right up. Want to build a super day? Then start with the one great taste that makes a Super Bowl of cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. 
Just think of crispy golden flakes. Delicious, crunchy flakes of corn. So pure and simple, just can't wait. Low in sugar, loaded with vitamins and iron. So good for you, don't hesitate. For a super bowl of our most nutritious corn flakes ever. What a super bowl. Have yourself a super bowl. Gallon's corn flakes. Super flakes, super good. Gallon's corn flakes. Do you know me? I have one of the best-known names in China. But still here in Peking, a lot of people don't recognize me. So I always carry the American Express card. With this, I can get great service for myself, or even service for 12. To apply for the card, look for an application and take one. The American Express card. <laughs> This is the soft, pure light of the GE soft white bulb. It creates a soft, warm glow that's beautiful to see by and bright enough to work by with less glare and no harsh shadows because its high diffusion coating makes light that's soft, warm, glowing so you can see the world the way you want to see it. The soft white by GE, it puts your life in a better light. GE, we bring good things to life. The following message furnished by Major League Baseball. Set your sights on the best in baseball. Order the 1985 World Series program. It's chock full of facts with World Series rosters and history and more than 100 pages of articles and photographs, making the World Series program a collector's item, and it's the same one sold at the ballpark. Send $6 check or money order to World Series Program, Box 8585, Trenton, New Jersey, 08650. That's Box 8585, Trenton, New Jersey. For the Cardinals tonight, Ozzie Smith, who had a lot of experience leading off when he was the San Diego shortstop, is on top tonight, and Willie McGee is back where he was for most of the regular year in the second spot. Tom Herr bats third as usual. Jack Clark is the Cardinal cleanup hitter. And against the lefty Libra, and it's Tito Landrum hitting fifth. Then a flip-flop. Terry Pendleton goes from seven to six, and Cesar Cedeno drops to number seven in the order. Darrell Porter is the Cardinal catcher. And on the mound, Danny Cox. And for the Kansas City Royals defensively, it's Steve Balboni at first base, still trying to get untracked at the plate. The second baseman is Frank White. Big hero in game three. Buddy Biancalana making a big name for himself in the World Series. The shortstop and George Brett is at third, and he says he's fine. In the outfield, Lonnie Smith in left. And in center field, Willie Wilson, who made that scintillating catch in St. Louis. And a ball over his head. Pat Sheridan starting in right field with the right-hander working for St. Louis. Jim Sundberg, very instrumental in the victory for KC the other night, scoring the go-ahead run. And Charlie Liebrand, somehow keeping his wits about him. A very friendly, good guy, and a fellow who, for the first time in his career the other night, did not come out to face reporters. He said it was simply a little too much. He's always come out. He has always been very accessible and very polite. And did attend a press conference yesterday. Said that was just a little bit too much. So Jim Quick is back of the plate. National League umpire tonight. Denkinger at first. Williams at second. McKean at third. Engel down the line in left. And Shulock down the line in right. Ozzie Smith to lead things off. And Whitey Herzog is the man who has made the lineup change tonight. Willie McGee has been leading off throughout the World Series in the absence of Vince Coleman. But McGee drops to two, and Smith takes low ball one. There is Vince Coleman, who is naturally out, as you know. Six weeks rest prescribed for him because of that incident with a tarpaulin. The 1-0 pitch is fouled back, and it's one and one. Funny here, Tim, that all of the talk about the Royals not scoring and what's Hauser going to do with his lineup, and here's Herzog who makes the switch. Yeah, Ozzie Smith, uh, a, a bit of a problem, I think, batting in that number two hole, one for 16, and kind of unusual that Whitey would move him into the number one hole. Herzog was saying before the game that Smith should be comfortable there with a lot of experience when he was a Padre, and as you look at it, batting in this spot for the first time since 1983, McGee is probably more comfortable hitting second. 
Brett knocks it down, recovers, throws, and still gets him for the out. So he hit it hard enough for George to be able to make the play. And Smith is one for 17. Well, George gets in front of the ball. If you do get in front of the ball, you still know you have enough time if you make a good throw. There you see the throw by a step. One out with the bases empty, and Willie McGee, who hit second during the regular season much of the year, had been moved because of the Coleman injury into the number one spot. And McGee quietly having a decent series, seven for 19. And swing strike, and the count is 0-1. Seemed like a relatively easy play for Brett. But a lot of third basemen, if they back up, what they do is to take it off the chest instead of being in front of the ball, caroms off to the left and right. If you keep the ball in front of you at third and you have any kind of arm at all, you have momentum going towards first base and it makes the play a lot easier. Crowd, some of the crowd anyway, Charlie! about 50 or 100 chanting Charlie, Charlie, trying to get the rest of them stirred up. And the count one and two. Talking to pitching coach Gary Blaylock, and I said, well, what's the velocity on Lee Brandt's fastball? He said, well, average around 85 miles per hour. But what makes it really a better than average fastball is he has a great changeup, and it's uh, something that he came up with in winter ball of 1983. He was really much a kind of a journeyman pitcher. He pitched in the National League a couple of years, never overpowering, never effective. Came up with a changeup, and it made his fastball look about three feet longer. In the air to center field and an easy play. Willie Wilson. Two out, base is empty, and Tommy Hur, the batter. It's an expectant crowd. You can really feel it. They felt that once they could get the series back to Kansas City, the fans and the players alike, that things would swing over to the Royals side. And who's to dispute it right now? We mentioned the other night also that the Cardinals have not been swept at home all season. And realistically, Kansas City went to St. Louis and did what they wanted to do. Naturally, you'll take three in a row, but two out of three is the next best thing. Tommy Herr, who has not driven in a run in this World Series in five games after driving in 110 during the regular season. Two out, no one on. One and one the count. Hart hit 282 right-handed this year. He was better the other way at 313. Well, when you talk about Tommy Hur, you're talking about discipline, and that's the one thing I think that has affected him. Uh, you, you talked about the scattering force. I don't believe he really knows the Kansas City pitchers, and then when you couple with that, but they have outstanding ability. <laughs> An appropriate sign for a game six. And we'll be talking all night about Lee Brant staying out of the middle of the plate. If you go back and look at this series, the two pitchers that have had trouble are Bob Porsche and Joaquin Andahar. All the other pitchers have stayed really away from the center of the plate. And you know, Tim, if you're catching a ball game and your pitcher's in the middle of the plate, even if he's, you might be able to be a tip Todd Worrell for maybe an inning or two, but over the long haul, you better stay on the corners. And her strikes out. So a most promising beginning for the Royals as Lee Brandt sets them down in order. And at the end of the half inning in game six in Royal Stadium, cards nothing. Royals coming up. Shoes and cowboy shoes, gift cards and high gear. Now you're talking country, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's are spoken here. Stroh's, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you're talking Stroh's, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's are spoken here. The essence of hitting. George Brett. Some guys say it's the rhythm, reading the pitch. For me, it's a film that says I'm going downtown. The essence of shaving. This is Atra by Gillette. It pivots so the twin blades stay on your beard longer. 
But what Atra is all about is the feeling that says you just got Gillette's best shave. Gillette, the essence of shaving. For the Royals tonight, Dick Hauser will play the exact hand that won game five. Lonnie Smith will lead things off. And then Willie Wilson, who had a key triple the other night, is in center field batting second. George Brett, as usual, none the worse for wear, batting third. Frank White, once more the cleanup hitter. Pat Sheridan slumping in this series in right field batting fifth. Steve Balboni still trying to get on track. The catcher, Jim Sundberg, bats number seven. Buddy Biancolana having a good series, hitting eighth. And on the mound, Charlie Libre. Cardinals defensively, the outfield of Tito Landrum, Willie McGee, and Cesar Cedeno with Pendleton, Smith, Herr, and Clark in the infield. Darrell Porter gets the start. He caught the first three games, and then Tom Nieto caught two. And Danny Cox on the mound. Cox, the third winning is pitcher, and you don't often see an 18-game winner have two fellas win more on the same staff, but that was the story with John Tudor and Joaquin Andujar, and ironically, it is Andujar who is one of the long men tonight. He's out of the rotation. We talked about the balance of this team. Not only do they have a great team balance offensively and defensively, but in the pitching, they have a great bullpen. We talked about the five guys that do the job out there. If you're Whitey Herzog, you want to have a deep staff. It's nice to have Andujar with 21 wins and Tudor with 21 wins and also having a guy like Cox that fits a lot of innings and has a low earn run average. Up high to Lonnie Smith. One and oh is Smith, Wilson, and Brett in the bottom of the first inning. Just a gorgeous night. Temperature in the 60s, light breeze, just a sweater necessary. And a light one at that. One and one the count. Danny Cox, a dart thrower. He has to be very fine. Works the inside part of the plate and the outside part of the plate. He's got a good straight change, but his best pitch is his slider. And as we said in the opening, be interesting to see if that elbow's going to be irritated. And there was the slider right there. Two and one the count. It's also the kind of injury when you, which my elbow always seemed to hurt. The longer you pitch, the more it hurts because the aggravation just builds up. It's a type of pitch that you might go four or five innings. And when I talked to Danny a couple of days ago, he said, number one, it gets better with more rest, which he's had, which is probably why we didn't see him pitching on Thursday night. And number two, as the game goes along, it gets a little bit sore. Three and two the count. Off balance follow through. Is that indicative of anything to you, Tim? Well, if I were a pitcher, I would never have been concerned about the follow-through. It's how you deliver the ball to the plate. Some of the greatest pitchers that have ever pitched had the worst follow-throughs. Bob Gibson was one of them. I was thinking about that only as a possible suggestion of, is he trying to do something maybe a little differently because the elbow could be bothering him? And he winds up off balance. Not I thought on the left field, but possibly. I would think, though, Al, uh, of course, I pitched on this mound many times. This is a mound that is a lot usually flatter when you get out there than the warm-up mound. Therefore, sometimes it takes a while to adjust. And that's Rick Fair down the line and into the left field corner. Lonnie Smith can run, and he has an easy double. was a slider, but it was not a quality slider. Kind of hung right over the plate, and Lonnie Smith does with it what a lot of hitters will do, and that slider does not break. A rope down the left field line, and Lonnie has the Royals with a chance to score some runs here in the first inning. Now, one thing Smith did in one of the league championship series games is start the first inning with a double, and the next thing you know, he stole third, so that Wilson wouldn't have to think about only advancing him, but scoring him. Well, Daryl Porter does not have a good throwing arm. One thing Kansas City has been throughout the series, been very aggressive on the base runners. Excuse me, the base pass. Actually, sometimes it's, they run themselves right out of some innings. Smith cheating over a little bit toward the bag at second to keep Lonnie Smith close. 
And it's up high. Willie Wilson has more hits than anybody in the series thus far, a total of eight, batting 364. This is a very difficult situation for the third baseman. He's got speed to his left on second and speed at the plate. One and two on Willie Wilson. Of course, there are two strikes right now, and he doesn't really have to worry about the butt, so he'll drop back a couple of steps, as you see Terry Pendleton do. But up to two strikes, if you're concerned about the bunt and you move in thinking the hitter will bunt the ball, then to Lonnie Smith, who was on second base, if he steals, there's not a chance for him to get back to third. And that's what happened to Garth Orge of the Toronto Blue Jays when Smith took off. All right. It becomes very important for... Wilson to get on for the Royals. If he doesn't, you leave first base vacant. And even though you might not walk Brett intentionally, you'll probably pitch around him, which is tougher to do when first base is occupied. And Wilson grounds it down to her at second. He advances the runner. Smith moves up 90 feet, and here comes Brett. The other night, you all recall this, the play that will live in our memory banks for a while. Sliding into the dugout, the great save by Lee May, and also Mike Jones, a pitcher, getting partial credit for it as well. And Brett, just fine. In fact, he singled in the only other at-bat he had that night following the incident had a little blurry vision after the game. They took him out defensively in the ninth inning and inserted Greg Fryer, but he says he's fine. No aches, no pains. Sees things perfectly. Oh, and won the count. Just kidding with Lee May, the batting instructor. I said, Lee, I, I, I can see that if you're going to try to save one hitter on your team, it might be George Brett. When you're the batting coach, that's got to be your top priority. <laughs> exactly. It's a bit of a surprise why Whitey Herzog's pitching to George Brett. If you remember back in game three, he walked Brett with Willie Wilson at second base in the first inning. And the count one and two. Well, he really may not be pitching to him, that ball. And we <laughs> talked about this with Cox 93 miles per hour on the radar gun is that Will George, when he knows he's probably not going to get too many good pitches to hit, expand the strike zone. Right there, you saw him swinging a ball over his head. Two and two. There's a difference, however, when you pitch around a hitter with a runner at third base as opposed to pitching around a hitter with a runner at second base. If you make a wild pitch or a pass ball with a guy on second, he goes to third. Do it with Smith at third, and he scores. Infield is playing back. And the 2-2 pitch is strike three call. Jim Quick, National League umpire, bringing out Brett. Well, we've talked about how the strike zone has come down. Right here, ball does tail back, ends up almost inside middle. I think George Brett thought the ball was high. Now, this year, yes. You used to get that pitch all the time. Very rarely do you get that pitch. And the call from a National League umpire. So Brett strikes out two down. Lonnie Smith, the runner at third. No score at bottom of the first inning. And White at the plate. In there, 0 1. White has more RBIs than anybody else in the series, a total of five. He also has three doubles. He was the big star in game three when the Royals won six to one with a double and a home run and three RBIs. One and one the count. To me, it's always interesting, and Tim, you caught for eons, but it's amazing even though you do have the inside protector, each umpire strike zone does differ. No appeal, or they don't get the appeal from Don Denkinger. Two and one the count. Well, you see the umpire working the slot. That means the slot between the hitter and the catcher. 
Frank White very close to going around, but first base umpire Don Dinkinger says no, sir. Lonnie Smith at third, two out. And the 2-1 to White is grounded toward the hole. Ozzie Smith up with it and gets it. The leadoff double by Lonnie Smith is wasted. No score after one. It's icy cold and the wires are down and they're spitting sparks all over the ground. You gotta go. Can't fool around. That's why America goes with Prestone. A fresh fill of Prestone 2 antifreeze fights freeze up and rust up too. A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze. While the Prestone radiator looks this good. Get the Prestone difference. America goes and goes and goes with Prestone. Hershey Bar, one of the old-time greats. Hershey. Hershey. When you want pure milk chocolate, with or without almonds, nothing but a Hershey Bar will do. Hershey. Hershey. One of the old-time greats. A sea of humanity, and yet one is all alone. The run of a lifetime. The New York City Marathon, live tomorrow on ABC Sports. Jack Clark will lead things off for the St. Louis Cardinals as we go to the second inning. Game six. The Cardinals trying to go home with a world championship. The Royals trying to send it to a game seven tomorrow night. Charlie Libre, who set the side down in order in the first inning, facing Clark, Landrum, and Pendleton. Clark, five hits in 17 trips. Remember, had the rib injury, which shelved him for the better part of six weeks down the stretch. Then the dramatic home run to beat the Dodgers in the ninth inning. And five for 17 in the World Series. Doesn't get cheated very often. 0 and 1. One and one account. You remember the last time Lee Brand faced Jack Clark? He threw him four pitches, three just missed the outside corner, and he got a single to drive in the first run of the game last Sunday night. Popped up. That's Brett. And that's four in a row. Retired by Lee Brand. <laughs> And I guess, what is it, the 26th of October? Uh -huh. Not that many nights away. Our handheld camera outside the ballpark. Those balloons, I believe, across the embankment on the edge of I-70 and a look into this gorgeous facility. Royal Stadium, Kansas City, a ballpark that opened in 1973. Toward the gap in right center and shallow, but here comes Sheridan to make the catch as Landrum hits one that hangs. Two down with the base is empty as Tito goes back and Pendleton comes up. Well, once again, they were able to get the ball in on Landrum. Pitch Danny Jackson did a great job the other night. He did get a hit on an infield hit, but he stayed on the inside part of the plate, and when they've gone away from Landrum, he's just been very effective. Herzog making the switch tonight at the top of the order, and also what he's done is move Pendleton from seven to six, and Cedeno, as you see Whitey in the dugout, Cedeno dropping from six to seven. Little squibber, and Lee Brandt lets Brett take care of it, and he does. Two perfect innings for the Royals left-hander. No score after one and a half in game six. Stolen bases, pennant races, stand right up and cheer. Now you're talking baseball. Now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times. And Strohs is spoken here. 
Stroh's, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you talk Effort is what separates one company from another. Effort is what it takes to stay ahead. Effort is the difference between a job and a job well done. Effort is what makes Hilton America's business address. Lister Mint with fluoride. How come your mint is Lister Mint? Aren't your teeth as important as your breath? Scope and Signal don't have it, but triple freshening Lister Mint has fluoride because healthy teeth are as important as minty breath. Maximum Strength Sinutab with the three medicines you need to let you breathe again. To dry up runny nose, watery eyes, to relieve throbbing headache. Maximum Strength Sinutab, the complete remedy for sinus or sinus cold. Right now, there are more Americans facing trial for espionage than at any time since World War II. What secrets have the Soviets learned? Monday on World News Tonight. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation of the 1985 World Series is being brought to you by Stroh's and Strohlite. Now you're talking good times, and Stroh's is spoken here. Bottom of the second inning, Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver with you from Kansas City. Game six, no score, and Pat Sheridan to lead things off. Then Steve Balboni and Jim Sunberg. Pat Sheridan, three for 15, but the way he's been swinging, even 200 sounds high. One and oh the count. And a delayed call and a strike called by Jim Quick on a pitch that he contends got the outside corner. The way Quick called that pitch, you could tell that even he wasn't sure. He did not call it quickly, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> or emphatically. And that's a strike. And the count is 0-2. One of those examples, if you're a pitcher and you can throw the ball where the catcher is sitting and hit the glove, the catcher sometimes can cheat by an inch or two and you'll get an occasional strike. And down goes Sheridan. So he continues to look very bad at the plate. And Balboni coming up. Well, this is just a matter of getting overmatched. Ball right on the corner, you see it run away, 92 miles per hour. It's kind of answering some of our questions about whether his arm is bothering him. He appears to, after that leadoff double by Smith, he gets Wilson on a grounder, strikes Brett out, gets White on a grounder, and strikes Sheridan out. One out, here's Balboni, who takes inside, ball one. What happened in that leadoff double, Al, you hear a lot of people that talk about baseball talk about bat speed. If you're throwing 93 miles per hour, and you throw a slider that's about in the 80s, and you throw it in the middle of the plate, you allow the batter to get the bat head out. And that's exactly what happened with Lonnie Smith. You throw a fastball right by him, next pitch is in the middle of the plate. Instead of being late, it's a double into the corner. Two and oh, and Balboni rips it just foul. He's still looking for his first extra base hit in postseason action. It's funny, if you do it in the regular season, you can kind of sneak your way through a slump, and then all of a sudden people read the averages maybe every Sunday in the paper, and they say, well, that's not too bad, he's doing all right. But when you do it on national television for a fortnight, you do make an impression on people. Two and two. I don't want to sound like Johnny Mathis, but chances are when he does get a hold of one, <laughs> it's going to go a long way. He's just hoping it's not till the 12th of never <laughs> before it happens, right? And you guys are going to break into a duet when he does now. 2-2 <laughs> two -two to Balboni. He's fouled away. <laughs> we'll even get the organist in St. Louis to back us up, right? <laughs> Since it played throughout the entire three games at Bush Stadium. Well, you're still humming that one catchy tune. Oh, the old ditty. 
Full count now on Balboni. Three and two. I could just see that wagon going over George Toma, the groundkeeper here in Kansas City's mound, like it did in Kansas City. <laughs> or, excuse me, in, in St. Louis. He'd be going berserk. 3 2 pitch is hit into left center for a base hit. So Balboni is on. And Sunberg will come up. Man on with one out. Jim referring to George Toma, the groundskeeper here, as you watch Balboni's base hit. 3 2 slider. Not a bad pitch, but Balboni's pretty strong, as we've been talking about, and he just kind of muscles it into center field. In St. Louis, Jim talking about the fact that. Mr. Bush would come out with the beer wagon pulled by the Clydesdales each night before the game. We showed you a brief bit of tape before game three. And the horses would prance around the entire playing surface, including the infield, which led to Herzog's remark the other night as Sunberg takes a strike that the Clydesdales spent more time at second base than the Cardinals. <laughs> that was a great line. Sunberg fouls it away, and the count no balls and two strikes. Jim Sunberg, solid and steady and dependable, and a key figure the other night. One and two. Not only did he score and break a 1-1 tie, but it was the kind of play you almost had to be in the ballpark to appreciate when he made the catch on that high pop foul by Jack Clark. Two and two. Also give him a lot of credit. The real close play that John Shulock, the umpire, called at home. Still don't know if he was safe or out, even though he did call him safe. A great slide. Just got in with his hand. And then making the call. Well, Al, I, I think when a pitch fools a hitter, and I'm really not taking up for quick. Now, watch the delayed call right there. But when it fools a hitter, you saw Sunberg go back. Well, it also stands to reason that it would fool the umpire, too, because after all, the catcher between the three of them is the only guy who knows what's coming. Did you ever think about turning around when an umpire's having a bad night and telling him what's coming just to help him out? The Ancelana grounds it. Look at Ozzie Smith for the force. A great play for anybody else. A typical play for the Wizard. The dive by Ozzie. This ball's hit sharply by Buddy Biancolana. We saw Biancolana do it on Ozzie Smith the other night. Ozzie regains his balance on his knees. A toss to her to do it. Early each morning, we come to build the new Nova. It is a unique idea in imported cars. We are a community of workers. Each team takes great pride in its work. The result is Nova, a new car imported from America. Nova, built in America by General Motors and Toyota for Chevrolet dealers. If you're thinking of buying a personal computer and all the signs say it's time to take the first step, a few questions may still be holding you back. Will your PC have the power you want to run the software you want? What about expandability and optional equipment? And how much money is it going to take? If these questions have crossed your mind, now's a good time to look at IBM. The complete answer. An IBM PC can run the latest, most powerful programs and give you almost unlimited expandability with options like the new IBM printers and the IBM PC network. And today, prices are better than ever. So, don't wait. Once you take the first step, the rest come easy. IBM personal computers. See them at a store near you or call your IBM representative. Starting Sunday, November 3rd, John Jake's epic story of a young America on a collision course with love and war, North and South. 
extra, extra read all about it. I talked to Kansas City pitcher Brett Saberhagen earlier. All right, let's hear it straight from the man's mouth. Give us the report as to what took place at 11.38 this morning. We had um, my wife, Janine, had a baby boy, 9 pounds, 3 ounces, 20, 20 inches long and uh, a quarter inch. And uh, she's doing great. The baby's doing fine. Yeah, I can't believe how big it is. <laughs> he had all the figures, the whole thing, everything but the baby's ERA. And our congratulations to the Saberhagens. One and all the count. Be a great story for the Saberhagen baby to be told down the line how so many millions of people each night had to be informed as to the progress of Janine, who's doing perfect. Sedano is at the plate with the third inning commencing. Sedano, Porter, and Cox. No score. So Daniel, as he's prone to do it, he feels a pitcher is going to make him wait. He's done that off times through his career. He'll back out and he'll say, you'll play my game now. Two hits in the game, both by Kansas City, a double by Lonnie Smith in the first, a single by Steve Balboni in the second. One and two to count. Charlie Liebrandt came up with the Reds, sent over here in a deal. It was one of those, not minor deals, but one of the things that would not capture your imagination. And yet he's turned out to be a beauty. A transaction made by John Sherholz, Joe Burke, front office staff at Kansas City, and they have turned in some gems through the years. That was a minor league deal that sent Bob Tufts, also a pitcher, over to Kansas City, and they had an article in the Kansas City paper today about Bob Tufts. And since the trade, since the trade, Bob Tufts has acquired 30 hours uh, toward his master's degree at Columbia University. And Charlie Liebrand has almost acquired 30 wins as a member of the <laughs> Kansas City Royals. So Bob says the trade helped both guys. <laughs> Rune Arledge and Chet Forty paying their alumni dues now along with Bob Cox. As Cedeno goes down swinging. Second strikeout for Charlie Liebrand. Seven straight set down by him. San Diego and the Raiders is our presentation as the two AFC West rivals beat on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. 9 Eastern. One out and Porter is the batter. Darrell caught the first three games in the series and then since he was one for nine came out for Nieto the last two nights. And now back in again. One and other count. Good pitch. One and one. talking about an average velocity fastball and yet he seems faster than he looks. Well he does and producer Dennis Lewin said he's 88 miles per hour. Of course the gun that ABC uses is a jugs gun which is about three to five miles faster. I know a lot of people disagree with that but if you took the two radar guns that do use in the major leagues one is three to five miles slower than the other the jugs seems to be the higher thing but he's right around 88 on our gun. But again, it goes back to that changeup. If you establish a changeup and it's effective enough to make the hitter look for it, it adds a couple of feet to the fastball. Plus, let's put it this way, he has not thrown the ball in the middle of the plate very much. Plus, he has a 
to me the way I look at a fastball velocity really doesn't mean mean a whole lot. It's whether the ball moves. He got pretty good life on his fastball. It's moving around sailing and running back in. The high kick the sneaky delivery. Two two is inside and the count is full. So it's three and two with Danny Cox the pitcher on deck. Talked about Bill Campbell, reliever for St. Louis, all arms and legs. Not only does Charlie Liebrand have great location, he also has a deceptive delivery. Lifted into foul territory, Brent toward an unfriendly dugout. You know, one of the things Brent was talking about before the game was the fact that the one thing he did know he had in his favor going after the foul ball the other night was he was going toward friendly confines. That was his dugout. And he knew that somebody would be there. Of course, you never know what's going to happen, but having really watched a lot of baseball for 20 years, normally when another player goes in a dugout, you're going to help him out. That's grounded down to the right side of Balboni off the bat of Cox. And Charlie Lubrin has started the game by retiring the first nine. Cards nothing, Royals nothing after two and a half. Predicting the future is never a sure thing, but some people have a way of hitting the mark. Consider Merrill Lynch. In 79, it was said stocks were dead. We said they weren't. Later, hardly anyone saw the dawn of a new bull market in bonds. We did. Last year, others said high inflation would be back. We said it wouldn't and recommended investing in financial assets. We called it the way we saw it and ended up being right because of one key reason, our resources. They're unsurpassed by anyone. Bob. Hi, Tom. I just saw your client out there. OK, thanks. By the way, do you think he'll be surprised by your recommendation? Well, he's a smart man, and he knows our track record. To find out what Merrill Lynch is saying right now, call 1-900-210-1000. More resources. Better solutions. Merrill Lynch people, a breed apart. Out on the town, flying around, pizzas disappear. Now you're talking Friday night, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times, and Stroh's is spoken here. Stroh light, smooth, refreshing, less filling. Now you're talking Stroh's, now you're talking beer. Tomorrow, MacGyver's in a deadly encounter with a band of killers. And an airplane getaway sets up a daring rescue. MacGyver, tomorrow at 8, 7 central. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation of the 1985 World Series is being brought to you by Stroh's and Strohlite. Now you're talking good times and Stroh's is spoken here. Bottom of the third inning at Royal Stadium in Kansas City, game six of the World Series. Cardinals leading three games to two. This one is scoreless, and it's Lee Brandt, Lonnie Smith, and Willie Wilson. Saberhagen and Tudor, and that's what they're hoping for, and that would be the matchup tomorrow night in what would be definitively the final game of the baseball season. Strike to Lee Brandt. Of course, the way the weather has been, we might as well just keep on going for about three or four more weeks. Beach weather today. Ah, unbelievable. One and one. So this is the first all prime time, all night game World Series. And you can see how far off the line Pendleton is. And a great break in the weather. One and two. And of course, when night games were first played, everybody was talking about how it would be too cool. And it was done primarily for television, but that's not necessarily the case. Lee Brandt goes down swinging. And the reason I say that is a lot of times in World Series play or playoff play, you see a lot of games starting at unusual times, plus in late October, even if it were to start at 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, that wouldn't accommodate television. In the latter part of the game, you would have those shadows cut across from first to third base. And at night, of course, there's only one shadow, and that's dark. And uh, I think it's helped the players as much as it's helped anybody. Obviously, it's helped television because it's prime time viewing. 
Lonnie Smith has a hit tonight, one for one, doubled in the first inning, and it's low, ball one. Plus two-thirds of the games are played at night anyway during the season. <laughs> Except at Wrigley Field. We should correct that. It, it helps the hitters. <laughs> hitters like to hit at nighttime. Pitchers like to pitch when it's dusk and with you that, can't see. Yeah, sure, with that shadow hanging across in front of home plate. 1964 at Yankee Stadium, we had that problem. That was before renovation went on there. Hit in the air to center field. McGee initially misjudged it and still has a lot of time as the ball was hit high enough and hung long enough and Willie is speedy enough for him to go back and make the catch. Lonnie Smith hit it very hard, but it's an out and there are two down. Well, when you have this kind of guy's talent, it makes the play look easy. As Al said, misjudged it slightly. There is the White Sox manager, Tony La Russa, who just re-upped for another year in Chicago. Tony, who led the team to the Western Division Championship in 1983. White Sox making a front office change. Hawk Harrelson out of the broadcast booth, now the VP Baseball Operations. Can you imagine the Hawk with a coat and tie? More than that, can you imagine Hawk Harrelson now has to get up before noon for the first time in his life. <laughs> also more than that, we broadcasters hope it's not a growing trend. <laughs> <laughs> 2 and 0 and it's hit in the air to left field and right at Tito Landrum. So Cox and Lebrand setting them down through the first third of the game. We go to the fourth, scoreless at KC. The essence of climbing. John Bucker. You gotta know the rock, every inch of it. But what gets you over is a feeling that says you're going all the way. The essence of shaving. This is the Gillette Good News Disposable Razor. Light, easy to handle, twin blades. But what Good News is really all about is a feeling. A feeling you only get from Gillette. Good News and Good News Pivot from Gillette. The essence of shaving. Rise and shine, cast your line, catch the limit here. Now you're talking fishing, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times, and Stroh's is smoking here. Stroh's, fire brewed for smooth, consistent taste. Now you're talking Stroh's, now you're talking beer. Now you're talking good times, and Stroh's is smoking here. This year, one out of every six cars will need to have its brakes repaired. That's why at Midas, we offer a free brake inspection. If your car needs work, you know it's being done by experts. 500,000 people a year have their brakes fixed at Midas, and we're glad to have the business. But more important, we appreciate the trust. Trust the Midas Touch. Tuesday on Moonlighting, Dave used to make Maddie kind of crazy, but look how he's acting now. Kind of mature. No more kid stuff. Kind of adult. What's happened to Dave? Kind of me. Moonlighting, the perfect romantic comedy, returns Tuesday. Followed by the man the New York Times calls the perfect television star. Real stylish. Robert Urich is Spencer for Hire. Now on its new night, right after Moonlighting. All starting at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. You'll love, love it. it. Tuesday. Well, let's see. Give me a loaf of bread, a pound of Biancalana, and a slice of Balboni, huh? <laughs> right from room service. Ozzie Smith to lead things off in the fourth inning with no score. Charlie Liebrandt starts him with a pitch that's low. What was it? Tony Kornheiser of the Washington Post talking about Buddy Biancalana wrote, it sounds like a Chardonnay you would order in a three-star French restaurant. <laughs> one and one. We talked earlier about the lineup shift and move, moving Ozzy Smith from second to first. Earlier in the series, we were talking about it, the five switch hitters. Of course, Vince Coleman's not been playing. Ozzy is the best average hitter from the right side of, of the Cardinals. That could be another reason. Certainly has not yet to get a hit from the right side in the World Series. Only one, and that's from the left side. 
I think also when you have a tendency of not scoring runs, occasionally you'll just throw up another lineup. I don't think there's any definitive reason why he did that. Well, one big thing could be that Willie McGee hit second and drove in 82 runs all season long. Ozzie Smith pops it up, and Sunbury will have a play. One away. Ten up and ten down. McGee is coming up. There it is during the regular year, and you can see the tremendous difference between the regular season and what's happened in the past week. Of course, I think everything... Uh, when you talked about the Cardinals, of course, if, if you have Vince Coleman in there, those numbers may not be quite the same, was to keep the first three guys off. Not really talking about Clark, but talking the first three hitters in the Cardinals lineup off base. Here have a chance to really hold them down, and that's been the case. Also, it's worth noting with the count 1-0 on McGee that 47 innings have now been played in the World Series as McGee takes outside, and the Cardinals have scored more than one run in only one of those innings, and that was the four-run ninth inning in game two. Everything else has been a zero or a singleton. Well, if you talk to any pitching coach, any manager, and he says, you give me a pitcher, number one, that's left-handed, and also can go 2-0, and oh, on a guy that led the National League in hitting and throw him a change up on the outside corner. That guy says I want him on my pitching staff and that's exactly what Lee Brandt did right there. That's a perfect pitch and it counts two balls and no strikes. Got jammed and hits it down to short and the Ancelana comes up throwing to Nadam. Two down. So McGee trots back and Tommy Herr makes his way to the plate. Willie McGee, odds on choice to be the National League's most valuable player, and that will be announced in November. Interesting point that Jim just made about pitching situations. When you throw that 2 0 changeup and then come back inside with the 2 1 fastball, sometimes it's not the pitch, it's how you got there. And if you get there via the off speed pitch, sometimes you can bust the ball in on a guy that would normally handle the fastball inside. And that's what happened to Willie McGee his last time up. Foul away. John Tudor. A penny for your thoughts, John. And Brett Saberhagen. Oh, a nickel for yours. <laughs> Saberhagen. I have never seen anybody that young and that loose under these circumstances. be the matchup tomorrow night. One ball, two strikes to count on Tommy Herr. Joe John Tudor, Lee Brand, even though he doesn't have that sidearm motion that Tudor has, certainly works both sides of the plate like John Tudor does. In and out, in and out, a little change of speed, similar to Tudor in the way he goes about it. Hit down to Brett. Lee Brand has retired 12 in a row. He has just been magnificent in postseason, but is still looking for a W. No score. Mount Hood, Oregon, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Mount Hood means the best summer skiing in America. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden, old Milwaukee life. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place and old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Man, it doesn't get any better than this. Driven 10 hours a week, this toy could use $500 worth of alkaline batteries. Because when an alkaline battery goes dead, you throw it away. This is a GE Rechargeable. When it goes dead, you don't throw it away. You do something revolutionary. You recharge it. So why spend $500 for alkaline batteries when you could spend less than $15 for two GE Rechargeable batteries and a charger? GE, we bring good things to life. You're looking at definite major league material here, but not if we skimp on what he eats. So we give him Kraft Singles. 
Imitation slices use hardly any milk, but Kraft has five ounces for a slice. So his little bones get calcium they need to grow. No, he doesn't know what that big Kraft means. I'm glad I do. Kraft Singles, more milk makes up. And now introducing Kraft Light Singles. Great Kraft taste with 25% less fat. They were enemies on the run. Don't give me orders, boy. Next time I hear you call, boy, I better be one around. Spencer's Robert Urich and Carl Weathers, the defiant ones, tomorrow. On the subject of that play in St. Louis the other night, I spoke earlier with George Brett. Now, what about any after effects whatsoever from the play the other night? I have none. I uh, got poked in the eye when Lee May tried to catch me. Um, for a couple innings, I, I had to keep on blinking. You know, you get poked in the eye, it makes your eye water a lot. And I really wasn't picking up the ball that good. And Dick said, well, look, we got a 6-1 lead. I'll just go ahead and put Greg in. You want a hit? And I said, yeah, I want a hit. And I ended up getting a hit, so I felt pretty good. And Brett saying he was fine yesterday. No blurry vision. Fine tonight. Except in the scorebook, where there's a K in the first inning on a called third strike. A pond ball one. Brett, White, and Sheridan. Bottom of the fourth inning, no score. So the makings of another pitching duel. We talked about Lee Brand and what he's doing tonight. And the bad luck he's had in postseason. He did, though, pick up a victory in game seven of the... ALCS because he relieved Brett Saberhagen who had to come out of the game because he was hit on the finger. So even though he has pitched so well the last two years in postseason and has no victories as a starter, he didn't get that win in game seven at Toronto out of the bullpen. Looking at Danny Cox, and yeah, I mean, here's a guy 18 and 9, led the league in the highest percentage of first batters allowed, 41% over the course of a year. We talked about that stat that Steve Hurd has given us throughout the year where if you do allow the first runner of the inning on 51 percent of the time he scores to get him out it's only 14 percent. So kind of we're looking at a contradiction. But we did show us in game two that he pitches very well when he gets in jams. Ball three and that pitch was pretty similar to the one on which he was rung up in the first. Just took something off of it enough so that George was slightly out in front, still three and two. He not only pitches backwards as far as allowing a lot of first runners on base, but he does throw a lot of breaking balls behind in the count. In the air to right field, it's deep. Cedeno to make the catch. So Fred just got under it. A bit too much, and it's a long out. One away. Back-to-back well, -back change ups. As we see Cedeno going back. Nice play. He gets back to the fence to see where he is. And then comes back for the ball. A lot of outfielders. Let the punch fence play him instead of knowing where it is, and you have a tendency to reach for it. One out, nobody on, and Frank White tries to bunt his way on. It's a beauty. Pendleton, bare hands, throws. Too late. And pulling Clark off the bag. Frank bunted against Danny Cox. The first time up in game two. And Terry Pendleton playing him back and not even with the bag. A tough play for a third baseman because you have to respect the ability of Frank White to pull the ball by you, so you have to play back a little bit. But Frank White lays down a blueprint for a base hit. In a way, sort of typical of this World Series that the cleanup men have bunted so much. Clark tried it a couple of times as well. Sheridan grounds it foul, and the count 0 1. I tell you, that's a dangerous pitch with Frank White on first base. You start, if you remember the other night, 
George Brett got a change up and doubled down the line for the first uh, run of the game. When you have Jack Clark holding him on, not a lot of experience. Tommy Hurd cheating towards second a bit, even though Ozzie Smith will be covering. It gives Sheridan a chance to pull the ball through the hole. One and one the count. Coupled with the fact that you just blown Sheridan away with three fastballs away the first time up. Well, that's when we talk about a guy that's only been pitching two years in the major leagues. Amazing. He did win 18 games. He does get a lot of first batters on, which usually indicate problems. You throw three fastballs right by a guy, and then you come back with a changeup that most likely he will be out in front and will fall. With all that said, if you're Pat Sheridan, you've got to look for the fastball away. That's the cat and mouse game that's played between the hitter and the pitcher. Two and one. You're sitting at home and you say, well, how come Daryl Porter, who's a veteran catcher, or how come he let him do that? A lot of pitchers throw their changeup off the fastball. In other words, the catcher doesn't even know it's coming. That used to be a lot of fun. <laughs> White is going, the pitch is outside. Porter's throw to Smith is in time to nail it. So Darrell Porter down to Ozzie Smith. Darryl did, two down. Darryl did not have a, a good pitch to handle. Frank White, not a big lead. He was on, you could really say he was thrown out at first base and not second because he didn't have the big lead. And Ozzie Smith. If he missed him on the knee or the foot, his foot was in there before he tagged him on the on the chest. But that was a case of the ball beating him out of there. And Sheridan swings and misses, and a nice play by Smith to scoop it. The kind of lead that Frank White had, it almost looked like maybe Sheridan missed a hit and run. I mean, he had very, very tentative lead, not even a foot on the carpet. And we've talked about that. He had no jump whatsoever at first base. Sheridan grounds it into the hole in the right field for a base hit. You know, what you said, Jim, I think is very interesting. I, I'm, the more I think about it, I, I agree with you. I think Sheridan may very well have missed the hit and run there. Especially with Frank White with that small lead. Now look at the tag play. Frank White's leg stays down. Did Ozzy touch the foot? Nope. The knee? Nope. Now the chest, and by the time he gets up that far, Frank White had his foot in there. But when the ball beats a runner by that much, if it's close, you're punched out of it. So two down, and Sheridan at first base. And Balboni hits it in the air to center field, and right to Willie McGee. So no runs, two hits, they leave one. To the fifth we go, scoreless. Crow Wing, Minnesota, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Crow Wing means Northern Pike. Big and mean. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. And old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. Can any new size van give you the comfort and features you're looking for? Meet Chevy Astro. It's the van that can. Doors open wide. Choice of seating inside. Hidden surprises. For things of all sizes. Technological feats. Visual treats. The only new size van that comforts you with all these features is Chevy Astro. It's the van that can. Drive today Chevy. Live today Chevy. Astro. Get your seas shined up, grab a stick of juicy fruit. The taste is gonna move ya. Take a sniff, pull it out. The taste is gonna move ya when you pop it in your mouth. Juicy fruit is gonna move ya. It juice the salt, it gets right to ya. Juicy fruit, the taste, the taste, the taste is gonna move ya. The best buy for a piece of the million-dollar purse in the only match play event on the PGA Tour. Live coverage of the Tucson Match Play Championship continues tomorrow.
This ABC Sports exclusive presentation of the 1985 World Series is being brought to you by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers. All right, let's get our mid-game comment from number 44, Reggie Jackson. You know, I think the lack of offense is starting to surprise me now. Al, it's been six ball games now and really don't see much, much happening. Very surprising to me to see what St. Louis is doing. Here's a team that led the National League with a 264 batting average. Do they miss Vince Coleman that much? Maybe they do. Here's a guy with 110 stolen bases and 20 doubles, which means he was on second base 130 times. The Kansas City Royals, on the other hand, I can understand their problems because they were second to last in, uh, in offense in the American League or in batting average. They hit only 252. As ball games get close like this and stay tight, seems to me like guys start trying to hit home runs so we'll see if they can stay within themselves to try to end the game or put themselves on the board we'll see if they can stay within themselves and score runs and here's the typical example of a man up there to hit a home run or at least attempting to on almost every swing one and two to count on Jack Clark well that's the one thing I, I know when I pitched I really felt that of course depending on what kind of club they have contained Jack Clark he has not been able to hit a home run he's had four RBIs but they've kept him in the ballpark. In fact, there hasn't been a home run hit here in Kansas City. And this is supposed to be almost the same dimensions as it was in St. Louis, but everybody felt that St. Louis was a better park to pitch in, and we saw three home runs when we were there. Fly ball, shallow center. Wilson got fooled. White goes out, and Frank takes care of it. One of those plays where the center fielder misreads it and goes back. But high enough and not deep enough, and no problem for White. Kurt Flood told me something one time that was very indicative of, of what Willie Wilson just did, and that's why Frank White had to make the play. On a ball hit right at the center fielder, if the ball is above the beak of the cap, you break back. If it's below the beak of the cap, you break in. And that's what happened to Willie Wilson right there. He broke back and couldn't recover in time, and White had to make the catch. Interesting little theory. Never heard that before. So if the ball is even with the beak of it, you just stay where you are. That's exactly right. In your tracks. Oh, no, you can see it because you're going to have time. If the ball's ab above the beak of the cap, you've got time. If it's below, you better get going forward. That one is out of play, and the count is one and one. Uh, Tito Landrum. I like this information. I mean, I'm playing on a lot. I'm playing on a lot of softball this uh, when I get to Phoenix. So uh, not center field, though. No. Left field. Left field. I know. Hey, I know my limitations. <laughs> if you would have listened to Weaver, you would have known all of this by now. Let me tell you something. Weaver had his outfielders play so deep that the only ball that they ever went back on was a home run. Now wait a minute. <laughs> not Paul Blair, though. He played a shallow center. Only be not because Earl wanted him to. Oh. <laughs> That's foul away and a count one and two on Landrum. One out, base is empty, no score. Charlie Liebrand has been perfect through four and a third, setting down all 13. Royals have had four hits, but Cox has scattered them, and it's a scoreless sixth game. Two and two. Landrum now seven for 20, so he's hitting 350 in the World Series. Still two and two with Pendleton on deck. I think something that Reggie alluded to, which is, do they miss Vince Coleman that much? Yes, I think they do because we talked about Landrum, 391 coming off the bench, second best pinch, pinch hitter in the National League, good defensive outfielder. But again, and it's almost a cliche now that speed doesn't get into slumps. Fly ball to right center field. Sheridan comes on. 14 straight set down by Libra. Two down. Reminder tomorrow morning, 10.30 Eastern time, the New York City Marathon. Over 19,000 runners ready to compete. Greta Weitz, Orlando Pizzolatto at 10.30 Eastern time tomorrow. Two down. Coleman looking on from the dugout, and Pendleton is at the plate. A strike. You know, I suspect something. It would have to happen the right way for her eye, but let's say either tonight or if we go to a game seven tomorrow, the Cardinals have a very big lead late in the game. 
I'm not sure that Whitey Herzog might not send Vince Coleman up to hit one time just to play in the World Series. With or without the cast. <laughs> well, that's a soft cast, and he can at least jog down to first base. If the lead was big enough, down to the third, Brett throws out Pendleton. Five perfect innings for Charlie Liebrand. No score through four and a half. Hey, you say you're getting tired of lettuce and tomato hamburgers in this town that don't quite make it? Yeah! You say that just once you'd like your hamburger hot and your lettuce and tomato cool and crisp all at the same time? Yeah! Well, I say you got it. I'm talking McDonald's new lettuce and tomato hamburger, the McDLT. I'm talking quarter pound of beef on the hot, hot side. And the hot stays hot. The new McDLT. Hot, hot. Crisp lettuce and tomato on the cool, cool side. And the cool stays cool. The new McDLT. Cool, crisp. The beef stays hot. The cool stays crisp. Put it together, you can't resist. The hottest taste, the coolest dish. Keep the hot, hot. Keep the cool, cool. McDLT. McDLT. Hot beef and the Cool, crisp LT. Tasting lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. No matter how fast life gets, no matter how hard you work, Right Guard can help keep you smelling good for up to 24 hours. That's protection. Right Guard protection. The enemy, rain. A mere one-eighth inch can float your car off the road. Thus the rationale for Vector. Goodyear's unique all-season radio. So advanced, its crisscross tread actually pumps away water to help more tire and your car stay on the road. The Goodyear Vector. It simply performs like no other tire in the world. Crack staff has obtained the exclusive first photos of Drew Saberhagen. Drew William Saberhagen, 11:38 this morning. So the baby watch continues. Yes, it does. Well, the baby watch is over right now. Is Drew a left-hander or a right-hander? Oh, we just watched the baby. How can you say it's over? <laughs> That's right. Sunberg to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth inning. <laughs> We'll make this into a primetime series, I suppose. <laughs> Sunberg, Bianca Lana, and then Lebrand. It's a strike to Sunberg. <laughs> Truman's home, not far from this ballpark, Independence. And the count, one and two. I think that was printed in 1948 on the front page of the Chicago Tribune. It certainly was. History tells us that was not correct, however. <laughs> Didn't make the final edition that way. Oh, no. <laughs> two and two the count. On Sunberg. No runs, four hits for the Royals. No runs, no hits for the Cardinals. And Charlie Lebrand has pitched the perfect game through five. Three and two now. Danny Cox hasn't walked a man. He has struck out four. There is Lee Brandt. Cool and calm and composed. And Jim Lomborg, the last to do what Lee Brandt has just done in 67. As Sunberg lines at the left for a base hit. This is how a few of the Royals rallies have begun. They love to get it started from that lower part of the order. If you can do that and get to the top, you're in pretty good shape. Well, it's also where scouting reports pay off. Three and two. Jerry Terrell and the rest of the Kansas City scouts know that Cox throws a lot of sliders. Sunberg most likely was looking for one because he wrapped it to the left for a base hit. No way Bianca Lana is going to be bunting with Lee Brand up when this is the case. Middle innings usually hit and run. The pitch is a strike and the count is 0 and 1. 
The ankle on it. Coming in tonight, a 500 on base percentage for the World Series and 371 for all of postseason. And this is a fellow who hit 188 during the regular year. Fouling it away in the count is 0-2. Only 170 from the left side, so he's having a mark. What's more impressive, and I guess this is one of the reasons why Dick Hauser played him really just about the whole second half of the season is because of the outstanding job he's done defensively at shortstop. Crowd chanting, buddy, buddy. Up and in, one and two. Lee Brandt is on deck with no one out, no score, bottom of the fifth. Two balls and two strikes. You can always tell a pitcher who throws a lot of sliders can't straighten that arm out. And Danny Cox, even though he is young, you can tell he's thrown a lot of sliders. That right arm will not straighten. That looks like he's in a permanent handshake position. Bob Gibson the same way. Lifted to right center. McGee and Cedeno. And Willie takes charge. One away. So Sundberg is at first. One down. And Charlie Lebrand comes Charlie up. He struck Lebrand. out in the third inning. Jim Palmer, however, with those brilliant mechanics and also the fastball curveball. Kidding about that, though, Jimmy. You didn't throw a slider. You cut a little fastball, and, and consequently, your arm can straighten out, right? For the most part. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. You go to a tailor, and he makes the right arm about three inches shorter than the left arm, right? <laughs> Actually, my right arm is longer, which is kind of a rarity, and we'll most likely see the bunt here. Charlie Lee Brand in game two bunted into a double play. We've talked about it's a much easier defense, a bunt on Astrofer. Down to Clark, and he makes the play unassisted. In addition to bunting into that double play, he also did sacrifice successfully on one other trip. So three unassisted, Sunberg at second, and this is what the Royals want to do, get to the top of that order. Look at the bad head, the bad head above the hands, and that's why he got the bunt down. Jack Clark, the reason he bunts the ball to first base, Jack Clark's responsibility is to hold the runner on, and Clark playing conservatively there because it's the second out of the inning. No sense in trying to go to second base on a play like that because it's the Royals actually have one shot to drive Sunberg in. And Lonnie Smith has hit the ball hard tonight twice. He doubled in the first inning. And the ball he hit for the out was hit much harder than the double when he drove one to center in the third. So he has timed Cox twice tonight. And he grounds this one to the left side, fielded by Pendleton over to first, and down go the Royals. At the end of five, no score. We'll be back to the 1985 World Series after this word from our local stations. 19 armed fanatics seize a U.S. government military installation, killing one bystander. After a 24-hour siege, they are captured by a squad of United States Marines. Their leader is John Brown. The year is 1859. It was a young America in crisis. John Jake's epic, North and South, starts Sunday, November 3rd. Mexico was a golden dream. The unspoiled beaches, the warmth of the sun, and something even warmer. Come feel the warmth of Mexico. You'll feel it from everyone. Oh, no one will believe this. Feel the warmth of Mexico. When the people will warm you as much as the sun. Feel the warmth of Mexico. Once you feel the warmth of Mexico, it's so hard to say goodbye. Feel the warmth of Mexico. My dad's new truck by Robert G. My dad's new truck is really neat. He drives it up and down our street. The prize is five years old like me. He won't, he won't let mommy have the key. The end.
Even after countless improvements, the 1986 Toyota Standard Bed Truck is the same price it was five years ago, when Robert was born. Now, who could ask for anything more? Tonight, coming up after the movie, a special report on the big spin, the chance for Californians to win $2 million, plus World Series highlights and analysis with Tommy Lasorda, and the latest on the journey of Humphrey the Wrong Way Whale. Rapidly, the college football scores have been missed. Them. Iowa wins big. So does Penn State. Nebraska, 17-7 over Colorado. Michigan, a winner. Auburn, number five, a victor. Air Force, a winner. BYU, Texas, El Paso tonight. Buckeyes win by four. Florida State, a winner. And so, uh, no upsets in the top ten, pending the outcome of that one-night game. And Notre Dame and Navy will be coming your way, along with... Uh, Florida State against Miami next week on CFA football. Now to the sixth inning. Cesar Cedeno fouling it back on the count of zone one. Cedeno, Porter, and Cox against Lee Brand, who's pitched five perfect innings. Charlie has struck out two. He got her in the first and Cedeno in the third. One and one. Baseball is a lot like golf. Every time you think you got it figured out, something goes. I mean, here's a guy that three for 25 in postseason play, yet when he came up, what, August 29th, from Cincinnati to St. Louis, he's up 75 times, gets 33 hits, six home runs. Almost every RBI, RBI he had was a key one. And then you go into a more or less a mini slump. I'll tell you, there'd be a lot of hitters in many slumps and major slumps if they had to face Charlie Liebrandt the way he's pitching tonight. He has not thrown a ball down the fat part of the plate tonight. And that's Luke to left field. Smith plays it conservatively, and he backs up. Lonnie had a chance to make the catch, but it's well known. We don't have to beat it to death. He is not a very good outfielder. He's a very erratic outfielder. In fact, he sort of reminds you of that commercial for the armed forces. It's not just a job, it's an adventure when a ball's hit out to him. I agree with you, Al. This ball had a lot of hang time out there. A lot of hang time, and Lonnie Smith is going over instead of in. And the one thing you can do on the rug and the artificial surface, the ball's going to take a truer hop. And even if you're on top of it, there's no chance of it bouncing over your head because you can smother a ball like that. You see it happen all the time. So the perfect game, the no-hitter, goes down the drain here in the sixth inning. And Cedeno is at first base with no one out. Porter fouled out in the third. One ball, no strikes to count. No runs, five hits for the Royals. No runs, one hit now for the Cardinals. Cedeno, who used to be very fast, obviously in his mid-30s now, has lost a step or two. As Porter takes a strike, but he'll still run. Well, if, if he could run, he would have been on second base because that ball was not hit that well. Again, it might... I cannot think for Lonnie Smith, but in a tie ball game, nothing, nothing. You don't want to set up the leadoff man with a double. That might have been his thinking. Because if you do kind of, as you said, smother the ball, and the ball goes away at all, the runner is going to go to second. So maybe he did the conservative thing, but he does leave that right field hole open with Porter, a left-hander up there. That's the way big innings start. Talked about in the pregame show, the one thing Dick Hauser could not have happen is the big inning. And a lot of big innings start when the bottom of the order gets on. A big inning might be considered one run in this ball game. Yeah. That's Luke into shallow right field for a base hit. Cedeno will. Stop at second and has to hustle back as the throw comes in. So, neither Cedeno nor Porter hit the ball well, but they have runners at first and second and nobody out, and Cox coming up to bunt. 
high fastball again gets in on Porter's hands it looks like here he hits it right about the trademark. As Al said looped into right field. Sedanio was thinking about going to third but Sheridan can throw and he does. Sedanio just gets back in time. Now in this bunting situation we'll see if the Royals put the rotation play on. That's when the first and third baseman charge. The shortstop covers third, and the second baseman goes to first. Or we'll see if they play it straight up. Cox had the most sacrifices of any pitcher. The rotation is on. It's a strike. He had eight sacrifices, the most of any Cardinal pitcher. So you know he can bunt. There's really three variations that you can do. You can have the pitcher throws the ball and covers third, tries to make the play and force the runner there, or he goes to first base. Brett charges and they try to get the second runner which would be Porter and keep a double play in order. Now the third variation is a pickoff play. Cox around the butt in the air caught by Brett and the runners hold. A big out because it keeps the runners at first and second and also brings up a man who is one for 18. And this is one time when Whitey Herzog's probably kicking himself a little bit about that lineup change with McGee and Smith. It's a big out, but what if George Brett drops this ball, throws the ball to third base, and then to second? You got a man on first with two outs. Frank White's at second base, Bian Kalana at third, Sedeno's tagging it right on the bag at second base. Not tagging, but he's on the bag. Porter's on the bag at first base. You drop that ball, of course you can't drop it once it touches your glove because it's intentional. No infield fly rule on a bunt. Unless the ball's high enough. And the ball wasn't high enough on that, I'll guarantee you. And, it was and no, if it is high, the guy's out anyway. There was so no what? signal from the umpire. No. So one out, runners at first and second. Royals bullpen getting busy. Sedeno, the runner at second. Porter, the runner at first. Crowd chanting Charlie, Charlie. Inside to Smith, and the count is one and all. Just going back to that play, Tim, and you've caught for years. If Sunberg calls the play, yes, it makes it a lot easier because Brett has his back to the runners, the pitcher has his back to the runners. That's grounded down to Bianca Lana. He goes to White one, back to first, double play. IBM presents You Make the Call. With a runner on first, the batter misses a third strike and then clearly interferes with a catcher's attempt to throw out the base runner. Is the runner out too? You Make the Call. If you're waiting to buy a personal computer, you may have questions about power, expandability, and dollars and cents. For the complete answer, take a close look at IBM. An IBM PC runs thousands of programs, expands easily, and prices are better than ever. So don't wait. Once you take the first step, the rest come easy. IBM Personal Computers. In the case of interference, an out must be called. Since the batter was already out, the runner must be called out too. If you said so, then you made the right call. Introducing the amazing Minolta Maxim, the world's easiest SLR, because it alone has built-in automatic focusing. Look, Maxim's autofocus lets you get perfect shots before others can even focus. Change lenses, Maxim again gets the shots that used to get away. Only the human eye focuses faster. Minolta Maxim, only from the mind of Minolta. Hey, Nick, you're missing the World Series. Come on. Well, since when is the World Series more important than our story? Since about 1903. The Insiders will return Wednesday. <laughs> Ozzy 
Casey Smith with runners at first and second and one out. You can see he's trying to pull that change up away. Now watch Porter bearing down on White. Porter does the job, but not before White gets rid of the ball to get just, to just get Ozzie Smith at first. Some kind of pitching by Lee Brand. First and second, nobody out. Gets Cox to pop a butt, then a doubleheader. If there's a game seven, eight Eastern, seven Central, six Mountain, and five Pacific tomorrow, Tudor and Saberhagen. No further billing necessary. Well, in close games, usually it's the little things that beat you. Cox failed to execute. We talked about his inability sometimes to get the leadoff man. If this guy gets on. And Wilson does get on with a base hit to right field. Willie taking the turn. It's a Daniel over to cut it off and get it back in. And so the Royals, quelling a threat in the top of the inning, have Wilson aboard in the bottom. Once again, a high slider. Wilson right on it. Having a great series. Cedeno, one thing in his mind, and that's to keep Wilson at first base. Now Brett. And Brett is what you would call for him anyway, do. It's not that he's having a bad series. He is 6 for 20, that's 300. But he's not been swinging the bat Brett-like, let's say, for a couple of nights. And he grounds it down to second. And the Cardinals from her to Smith to Clark turn a double play. So Dick Hauser watches Wilson get on, and Brett hit the next pitch right down to her. You remember two innings ago when we were talking about what a left-handed hitter does to that sinker away? That's exactly the pitch George Brett had. He was trying to use the hole on the right side, and when you try to do that, instead of hitting it back through the middle, that's what happens. Play Pepper with that second baseman all day long if you're a left-handed hitter. And as Ozzie Smith did to end the top of the sixth, you play Pepper with the shortstop if you're a right-handed hitter. Some kind of pitching by both Cox and Liebring. Two out, bases empty, and Frank White. It's a little squibber foul. Well, a little scrub. Excuse me, illustrates your point about the cat and mouse game. Brett's trying to hit it in the hole. Cox is trying to get the ball low and away. And in that time, Cox won the battle. Something you work on on the sidelines. A lot of people forget, and a lot of young pitchers forget that that's where you really prepare yourself to be able to make that kind of pitch. Working on the outside corner because you know when you're pitching, especially in a close game, that these situations are going to come up. And if you can't do it, Going to throw a grounder into right and have a first and third situation. Good fastball, two and two. beginning to the inning as Wilson singles but the Royals don't score as we go to the seventh. Today's Chevrolet is a little import called Spectrum. A spectacular combination of fun and practicality. We call it Spectrumality. Solid. Spectrumality. Price. Spectrumality. Room. Spectrumality. Technology. Spectrumality. Spirit. Economy and more, all part of the new Chevy Spectrum. A spectacular combination of fun and practicality called... Spectrumality! It's the day Chevy, Chevy! Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, 
exclusive Beechwood aging for a distinctively clean, crisp taste you find only in the king of beers. Dedication to quality. You know what it means. Because it shows in everything you do. Quality taste. Because this bud's for you. The most important thing is to, is to win the race, and, uh, and that is my goal. Uh, in this year's New York City Marathon, I wanted to win it. This ABC Sports exclusive presentation of the 1985 World Series is being brought to you by Birdweiser. For all you do, this bird's for you. So we're going to the seventh inning. Again, the New York City Marathon tomorrow, which is always very exciting, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. And speaking of marathons, the way Lee Brandt and Cox are pitching, we may be heading for one. <laughs> They have both been brilliant. The game is scoreless. The Cardinals are trying to win the world championship. The Royals are trying to set up a game seven. Seventh inning with him McGee. 0 for 2 is the batter. Low for a ball and the count is 1 and 0. Fly to center and grounded to short. McGee is now hitting 333 in the series. toward the hole, but backhanded by Bianca Lana gets in. A lot of times the barometer of whether a shortstop's going to be able to play in the big leagues is going into the hole and making a strong throw. What a gun. He's not Ozzy, but he's pretty good. He really planted that right foot there. And a lot of times when shortstops go to their right and try to plant that foot, it comes out from under them on the rug. But Buddy planted it and threw a seed to first base. Tommy Hur takes up high, ball one. That's Corinne. Charlie's wife and daughter watching their man pitch a gem. Grounded toward the hole, another good chance for Buddy, spears it. What <laughs> I tell you? Everybody thought Ozzy Smith would be the big story. And even Bianca Lana allows himself a little smile. Dirty Shoney can go to his right. This ball comes up for him. Had that ball stayed down, it would have been a, a much more difficult play. But Bianca Lana, watch the jump. You notice he pivots on his left foot. He doesn't lift his left foot up first. Like a good base runner at first base doesn't lift his right foot up first. You pivot on that. And he got a good jump and throws out her easily. Two fine plays by Bianca Lana. He's the only guy who's going to go from a supporting role on the Letterman show to a prime role on Dynasty, the way this is going. Two down and Clark at the plate. about that home run swing I found as a pitcher sometimes in extra inning ball games late late in the game when hitters go up there trying to hit a home run they become much easier outs as Reggie said our colleague he talked in the of the game, you have to stay within yourself now certainly Jack Clark the only true home run hitter on the Cardinals is probably trying to go up there and make sure that he gets a good swing but when the lesser hitters Single hitters try to hit home runs, they're doing the pitcher a favor. 0 oh, 2 pitch, he's outside, and the count is 1 and 2. George Brett on the line that cost him last Sunday with two out and a runner at third base to 2 0 lead. Jack Clark single the left, and he eventually scored the tying run, and two trailers made it 4 to 2 Cardinals.
ninth inning. Had to go over that uh, Barra play once again. It was a hard hit drive down the first base side. The Nelson fielded on the first top and tagged the bag. At first. Eliminated Barra. He was out. And then uh, Mantle could have been in a rundown, but it was not the case. He dove back safely to first base. Here's a ball one. Too high down to Maserati. And the Yankees have tied the game. Season after season, the people who brew Budweiser have been proud to be part of America's national pastime with you. The following message is furnished by Major League Baseball in cooperation with the Players Association. Hi, I'm Willie Wilson, and I want to tell you something important, and it's about drugs. I don't want your young people to make the same mistakes I made. Drug use can start very innocently, and before you know it, you're in over your heads. Once you're involved in drugs, you don't realize how many people you're going to hurt. Any friend who offers you drugs is really not a true friend. Remember, make the right choice. Say no to drugs. Baseball cares about you and your family. Tuesday, Dave used to be a wild and crazy guy, but Maddie's betting he can change. Shake. Moonlighting, the perfect romantic comedy, returns Tuesday. Monday night, the Chargers and the Raiders, two teams separated by about 120 miles. Great rivalry continues, and you'll see it at 9 Eastern time. Danny Cox pitching a gem along with Lee Brandt, working himself out of a difficult situation on a couple of occasions, in particular in the first inning when Smith went off with a ringing double, but he got Wilson, Red, and White. Gave up a couple of hits, but White was thrown out trying to steal in the fourth inning. Wilson led off the sixth with a single, as did Sundberg in the fifth. But nobody has scored as Sheridan starts things by taking a change for a strike. In fact, the Royals tonight have had the leadoff man on three times, but haven't cast. That gets the corner, and it's 0 2. Sheridan, Balboni, and Sunbird, bottom of the seventh. To me, Tim, it'll be interesting to see. The first time struck him out on fastballs away, the next time threw him a changeup. That's two. Two strikes, no balls. What will he do this time? Close it by <laughs> Strikeout number six. Sheridan, not only his statistics looking terrible, his swing looks awful. And that's why they say for hitters that it's sound to protect the outside part of the plate with two strikes. That's when you go into a defensive posture as a hitter, which means you're vulnerable inside, but you can't you can't look away and inside at the same time. Now Boney takes up high, ball one. Well, sooner or later, it has to happen. Now, Boney in the last two years has been up 56 times without an extra base hit in postseason. 2 and 0. This is a fellow who, believe it or not, if you've been watching television for the last two weeks, hit 36 home runs this year. Got the corner on the inside part. 2 and 1. Three and one the count. Sunberg is on deck. And that's a breaking ball to put him aboard. Balboni at first base, and that is the first walk of the night by either pitcher. Funny, Tim and, and Jim, if, if you like scoring and if you equate ex excitement with runs, this has not been a good World Series. But if you enjoy the game and you kind of pay attention to what's going on and you don't think about saying or writing just cute and clever things, 
for the sake of getting the line across, it's been a pretty good World Series. Pitching has totally dominated the series, and sometimes it will sedate a crowd, but not so here in Kansas City, and it wasn't the case in St. Louis. Strike, and the count on one. One out. Balboni at first base. No score in the bottom of the seventh. Fouled away, and the count is nothing in two. Almost a hit and run situation. Maybe not now, but earlier in the count. But again, I think uh, Dick Mauser, when he has seen what Sunberg has done off Danny Cox, he has not really hit him with much authority. You know if he misses the pitch, and Cox has made some great pitches with a slider, Balboni is going to be out at, at second. Still nothing at two with Bianca Lana on deck. Buddy, who is four for 14 in the series. Described by Tom Nieto as a pesky type of hitter when he played against him in double A ball. And Sunberg goes down on strikes. So number seven for Cox, who has struck out three of the last four men he has faced. And up comes Bianca Lana, and there is Todd Worrell throwing in the bullpen. So the one thing Cox has done Bianca is he's gotten Lana. Herzog to the point where he can go to his top guys. Not thinking about long men. Andujar was the long man early. I mentioned, too, that Daly was in Herzog's plans as a long man, but Ken is also the kind of guy who's available all night long. He can come in as a short man as well. And in the bullpen for KC, it's Quisenberry throwing. Even though neither pitcher looks like he's in need of relief, this is the World Series, and it's game six, and you get him up early. As Bianca Lana hits one to right center for a base hit. Balboni will stop at second, and now of all things, Hauser has to send up the pitcher, Liebrand. Well, he doesn't have to. Or does he? We'll find out. Well, we've got Hal McCray in the dugout for a situation just like this. Al McRae, of course, against John Tudor the other night, rounded out with the bases loaded, two out. And this is why I hate the DH. Yep. And it's not worth getting into a whole discussion of it right now, but think, think of what Hauser had to think about right now. No score, World Series, need a victory. What do I do? A pitcher who's pitching brilliantly, an inconsistent but terrific in the past relief pitcher. I've got to send the pitcher up. If you're not going to pitch it for Lee Brand here, what was Quisenberry doing up? 0-1 oh, the count. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking about answering. More seconds to think about <laughs> If the man gets the third, maybe? Nah, that wouldn't make any difference with two outs. Not with two outs. Not with two, that's what I'm saying, yeah. 0-2 oh, the count. <laughs> Well, you know if you stayed with Lee Brand in the second game and the way he's throwing tonight, which is really just as good or maybe better. And down he goes on a half swing for strike three. So Cox strikes out the side in between a walk and a single. And seven left for the Royals tonight to the eighth in a scoreless game six. This Halloween, don't just ask for a light beer. Bartender, please, give me a light. No, Bud Light. Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. Now, how about if I tweet? Make this Halloween a Bud Light fright night. Look for this display with free poster and special mug offer at participating retailers. Me, I'm an accountant. Recently, a young father heard some unexpected news. A college education may cost $140,000. He called Merrill Lynch. Does the plan you set up cover me? I'll look into it. Fixed income portion covers college. And get me investor support in New York. Ron, I need research opinions on these stocks. Well, the analyst is checking that company. You've got your sales and revenues up. Good. This is what we needed. Don't change a thing. More resources, better solutions. Merrill Lynch people a breed apart. Just about any personal computer does a better day's work with the help of an IBM Pro Printer. The Pro Printer produces high-speed drafts.
and clear graphics. It prints with near letter quality and turns out single sheets and envelopes without removing the computer paper. Best of all, the Pro Printer costs less than $550. For a better day's work, get the Pro Printer from IBM for the finishing touch. Now, Chevy announces finance savings up to $1,524 on new 85 S10 Blazer, America's most popular sport utility vehicle. Choose Instatrack four-wheel drive, available V6, all the comforts. Save up to $1,060 on new 85 S10 pickup and maxi cab too. Get big 8.8% finance savings on any new 85 Chevy S10 in dealer stock. But this offer is for a limited time, so hurry. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. There's Lee Brandt's line as we go to the eighth inning, a scoreless game. And earlier, I visited with Charlie. Do you feel it all maybe jinx the way things have been going? Well, uh, I don't know. I've been uh, fortunate enough to pitch some pretty good ball games. Uh, if I can do that again, uh, I think my chances should be a little bit better. Uh, maybe with the uh, quiz out in the bullpen, we might come to him a little bit earlier. I don't know. But I still felt confident to, even late into the ball game. I know uh, it's going to enter my mind if I'm fortunate enough to get that far into the ninth. Uh, but I hah not had too much success in ninth innings. But uh, I still felt my stuff was good. I still felt confident I was going to get out. Uh, I just couldn't get out. Uh, hopefully this will be different. Well, we'll find out. No score with Landrum Pendleton and Cedeno in the top of the eighth inning. Landrum fouling it away and the count is 0-2. Landrum has twice fly to right. One and two the count. Fred again guarding the line, back of the bag at third. Balboni guarding the line at first. To center field, Willie Wilson is right there. And Tito Landrum is 0 for 3. One away, Pendled in the batter. The Cardinals have two hits tonight. And neither was what you'd call a solid hit, a fly ball to left field by Cedeno that fell in front of Smith, and a looper to right by Porter that came successively in the sixth inning. Cardinals team average during the series is 196 coming into this game, and the Red Sox back in 1918 won the series in six games with a 186 average. That's grounded into the hole for a base hit, and so Pendleton, who had been getting pretty quiet, Makes a little bit of noise. A single to right with one out in the eighth inning. And Cedeno coming up. Well, this is the way you have to hit Charlie Liebrand. You have to go with the pitch. Goes right out and gets it. Doesn't try to pull it. Tim's alluded all night to Ozzie Smith and other Cardinal hitters trying to go out and get that ball and pull it. You can't do it and be successful. Cedeno struck out, broke up the perfect game with a sixth inning single. Pendleton at first base. You know, he sort of left unanswered that question of why Quisenberry was up in the bullpen if Hauser didn't break the minute as you look at Herzog. And wouldn't Vidal Sassoon like to get a hold of Whitey, by the way? <laughs> but I guess. As the throw goes to first base, what Hauser wanted was at least to have the option, and I'm sure did not make the decision until he was confronted with that particular situation. There was some question, perhaps, in his mind as the inning developed, and he wanted to be able to go either way. And then he just simply opted at the last moment for Lee Brandt to hit the two on and two out. Also, I talked to Dan, and he said a lot of pitchers can just get up and start throwing. He liked, he has to stretch and he has to throw, and sometimes his arm is stiff, and he has not gotten as much work as he normally gets. So it's maybe getting ready for the next time he'll have to get up. 0 oh, 1 the count. If the count evens up, if this next pitch is a ball, I would look for Pendleton to run. Pendleton with good speed. He has 17 stolen bases on the regular season. 
Cedeno a contact hitter. The bottom of the order coming up. All the elements are there for a hit and run, but not on this pitch. Well, when do you pitch out? Well, that's that's the, the thing. The danger of the pitch out is greater when the pitcher is ahead of the hitter because you can afford to waste one. We'll see. One and one. talk about a hit and run and what you try to do is get the, inner, the middle infielders to move create a hole that might not be there. If you're a runner at first base you cannot be picked off in a hit and run situation. Same is true if the counts three and two and less than two out and you're the runner at first. You're much Look, more deliberate in your lead. You're looking at catcher Jim Sundberg looking over at Dick Hauser. They do have four signs. Pitch out, two and one. Dick Hauser controls the pitch outs. I'll tell you, I'd have pitched out then too. Sometimes you do it and you're just wrong. But now he's behind and you may see the hit and run in order right here. I think he's going. I do too. James? I concur. Bet your house on it. <laughs> or Sheridan's house, it's still for sale. <laughs> He doesn't go. Two and two. Well, there goes the mortgage and everything else and the furnishings. Time two. <laughs> yeah. Pardon me? Oh, too bad about Pat Sheridan. We just lost his house for him. <laughs> well, the other night we all thought that they should have been running first and second with nobody out. And had they been running, it wouldn't have been a double play. That's right. On the pendled into her play in St. Louis. Two and two the count. I don't think he's going here. Nope, he stays and it's inside and they throw back the first, not in time. So now it's three and two. Well, he's got to be running here. Three and two and one out to good speed. Pendleton going out to check the dirt at first base. Close play at first base. Pendleton diving back and Balboni with that quick tag. Good throw by Sunberg. But he's safe. But I, say, is, I say he's going. You say he's oh, going. Yeah. Jim? All right, bet that hotel Burn room <laughs> that you moved into after you lost the house. Three and two with one out. Same situation. Three and two, one out. You cannot be picked off. It's up to the hitter to put the ball in play. Lee Brandt with an excellent move had eight pickoffs this year. He runs. The pitch is low and it's first and second. Two on, one out. And now Porter is coming up with a pitcher due up after Darrell. Well, nothing, nothing. You can't make a pitch in the middle of the plate. Just misses on the inside part of the plate. Ball four. Meanwhile, in the bullpen, Quisenberry and Black are up. Quisenberry, the right-hander, and Buddy Black, the starter, who is naturally working out of the bullpen under these circumstances. And in the Cardinal bullpen, Ken Daly has gotten up the left-hander because Herzog will have a decision to make if Porter can't get the man in. We talked about in the pregame show, Charlie Lee ran through 140 pitches last time he pitched. Nothing, nothing game. Every pitch can mean the ball game. He's got to be a little bit tired. Right. 0-1. Oh a lot different pitching a nothing, nothing game, a 2-1, to one, a 1-0 one ball game. The other two Kansas City wins, 6-1, six 6-1. to, one, six to one make a mistake it doesn't seem that monumental and Porter rips it foul and the count is 0-2 last time Lee ran hit first and second one out he got Ozzie Smith to hit into a double play Hauser 
looking at the lineup card, knowing the picture comes up next, knowing that Herzog, if Porter doesn't get Pendleton home, has a choice to make. Similar to the one Dick had to make, but Whitey has more options. He's got a much deeper bullpen, and Cox gave him the seven innings that he wanted. So whereas Hauser opted for Lebrand, I tend to feel Herzog with that deep bullpen would opt for a pinch hitter. particular pitch. That ball was right there, and now Whitey Herzog has gone to Brian Harper. Harper, the right-handed pinch hitter, came up only 52 times this year and batted 250 with eight runs batted in. So again, because of the flexibility and the maneuverability and Daly now throwing in the bullpen, and keep in mind he has five men who work out of the bullpen three and a half of whom he would bring in here. And I say three and a half, meaning Horton as the half a guy. You know Worrell, you know Lottie, and you know Daly with Pendleton at second and Sedano at first. And Horton maybe to one batter. Campbell's more of a long man. And that's why he can afford to lift his pitcher more so than Hauser in the bottom of the seventh inning. Also, we talked about losing Vince Coleman. Got to think that Tito Landrum will be batting right here. 391 on the year, second best pinch hitter in the National League, but because of Coleman's absence, you have to send somebody else up there. Brian Harper was the fellow who came over in that deal with Pittsburgh along with Tudor. He was the other guy in a deal that sent George Hendrick and a minor leaguer to Pittsburgh. Now, the Pirates, as you all know, had a terrible year. And think about that trade. Ugh. Fouled again, so he's jammed him twice, and the count is 0-2. George Hendrick wound up with the California Angels. As you see, Brian Harper trying to fight off this slider on the fist. And once again, Lee Brand ahead, 0-2. Two on, two out. <laughs> Harper, by the way, struck out only three times this season in 52 at bats. A little soft looper, and it's in the center for a base hit, and the Cardinals take the lead. And Charlie Liebrand has to be talking to himself. Well, he just missed away. He tries to come back up and in. Not hit very hard, but hit hard enough. Right off the fist. Watch the reaction by Brian Harper when this ball falls. So the Cardinals lead it one to nothing, and Ozzie Smith is at the plate with Sedano at second and Harper at first. And that's a strike. In the bottom of the inning, it's the top of the order for KC. Smith, Wilson, and Brett. This is the time when it's most difficult for a pitcher. Emotionally, it's always a roller coaster. Your heart's down by your knees. Your disappointment is unparalleled. But the only way you have a chance to win the ball game is if you can get the next hitter out. 
All of the runs that Lee Grant has given up, the four last Sunday and the one here tonight, have been given up with two out. And Sunbury goes to the mound. That's a, a good thing to do, I think, right now, because you're down one to nothing, and another base hit, and it's two nothing, and Blaylock's going to the mound. It's so visible, and, and how can you blame Lee Grant? If this happened isolated, you could feel for the guy. And yet you all watched him now throughout the playoffs and going back to last year. And the miserable luck he's had. Meanwhile, Andy Van Slyke now comes out of the dugout to run for Cesar Cedeno. After the count had gone to one and one, Herzog makes the change. And Van Slyke naturally will stay in the game and play right field. Your thoughts are, when am I going to catch a break? No doubt you feel sorry for yourself, but on the other hand, as you said, you can't let the game get out of control. Yeah, because those tack-on runs can be the difference. Got to stop them right here, and that obviously is what Lee Brandt's trying to do. Two and one. Two and two on Ozzie. If the Cardinals go on to win this game one to nothing and they'll get three or four more hits, they will have the lowest team batting average in the history of the World Series to be a winner. Amazing. inside and Sunberg not only trying to frame the pitch and Hauser is furious with Jim Quick. If he comes out to argue then he's out of the game. Well he goes back. Brett was up earlier. Similar pitch. Oof. Oof. And that's the most emotion you've ever seen from Dick Hauser. Because he knows now the runners are going. It's three and two. That was a vital pitch. And it's high, so the bases are loaded for Willie McGee. And Hauser is just seething, but he has to maintain his composure. He's going to the mound, and that second visit will mean exit Lee Brandt. And enter... Quisenberry or Black, depending on which way Hauser wants McGee to hit, and Willie has been remarkably consistent from both sides this year. Just an eight-point differential, so you're not doing him a favor by making him bat from either side. And Liebrain will come out to a no-doubt thunderous ovation. Debit side again, and the signal goes to the right-hander, Quisenberry. So McGee will bat left-handed. The base is loaded. Listen to the hand. this from your local station. Spencer for Hire, the series that the Newark Star-Ledger calls the best new drama series of the season. Robert Urich, the man the New York Times calls the perfect television star. Spencer for Hire, moving to Tuesdays at 10, 9 central, starting this Tuesday. Hey, if you could move those famous legs a little, a fellow might be able to sit down. Well, if it isn't Mr. Kelly, watch your step, Sonny Boy. These are new shoes. Sonny Boy? <laughs> I gotta say, you're looking pretty turned out, kid. Not bad for over on the road. <laughs> uh, you know, Fred, you never stop traveling in style. Oh, come see what it's like to travel in style on Western Airlines. It's the only way to fly. It's not a chicken, sausage, and ham.
New Orleans style jambalaya. Just one of Denny's six new dinners. Come on and try one. You find Denny's in your town. Denny's, we cook the way America eats. Now, any dessert free with our new dinners. Who's ready to unleash the most powerful small 4x4 ever to beat up a mountain? Who's ready to unchain more horsepower than any small 4x4 ever? Who's introducing the first 4x4 gas turbo in America? Toyota's who? 1986 Toyota 4x4 turbo. With all new high-track independent front suspension for even more comfort. It's the who's who in 4x4. Who could ask for anything more? Tonight, after the movie, The California Lottery, a special report on the chances for big losers and big winners, plus World Series analysis with Tommy Lasorda, and a timely reminder you could use before tomorrow. Right after the movie, see you then. Dan Quisenberry comes in with the Cardinals on top, one to nothing. Whitey Herzog making another move as you look at Charlie Liebrandt watching Quiz try to get out of the rest of this jam. Andy Van Slank, the runner at third. And Harper has been taken out for the pinch runner. Tom Lawless makes his first postseason appearance. He's at second. Ozzie Smith at first. The base is loaded and two out. And McGee at the plate. McGee 0 for 3. Smith, Wilson, and Brett, the top three for KC. Quisenberry, once he got ahead, just showing him that fastball inside because the sinker ball pitcher to a left-handed hitter has to keep the ball away, generally speaking, to be effective. That's grounded toward the middle. White is there. It goes the short way to the Uncalana. So Frank ranges back of second, and the National League batting champion retired on a force. And a good play by Frank White over to Biancolana to give the Kansas City Royals life. Give me a light. Bud Light. Oh, the chili. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first thing in taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Look, give me a light. No, uh, Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Mr. Goodwrench knows your car's engine is an inferno of heat and friction. 100, 200 piston strokes of engine wear per second. It needs the life-saving fluid that protects it right. GM Good Wrench Motor Oil. Takes the friction. Takes the heat. It's everything General Motors asks for in a fine motor oil. Get it from Mr. Good Wrench. No one knows your GM car better. No one. Power. That's what I practice for. Power. And afterward, I want all the power I can get in my antiperspirant. Speed stick. Now, Speed Stick is improved with the most powerful wetness fighter you can buy. Nothing, but nothing fights wetness better. The Wide Stick. Man-sized protection. Saves a lot of strokes, helps keep you drier and odor-free all day. Now it's the most powerful you can buy. New, improved Speed Stick antiperspirant. By Menon. Wednesday. We are going after cops. Bad cops. Some like it's hot and some sweat when the heat is up. The Insiders return. You'll love it. Some feel the heat.
Andy Van Slyke is now in right field. He came in as the pinch runner, and the pitcher is Ken Daly. Daly's numbers there for this, his first full season in the major leagues. He had been up and down with Atlanta, then came over to the Cards last year, pitched for four different teams in 84, and has begun to come into his own now. And the left-hander comes in here. And how does Herzog, and we've talked about how he uses his bullpen, how does he decide on Daly over Warrell and Lottie here? One of the reasons is he wants the left-hander to face the top of the order for Kansas City. He'd rather have Wilson, that right-handed than lefty, and he'd rather have Brett have to face a left-handed pitcher. So that pretty much is the determination as to why Daly is in here now. So even if there is a three up and three down inning, Todd Warrell may finish the ball game, work the bottom of the ninth inning. Matter of fact, I think he's up right now in the bullpen. He is. Lonnie Smith, who was one for three against Cox, 0 and 1. There is Todd. thrown two good fastballs 95 is what the gun says on that one we haven't seen his curveball yet he's got a great hook wonder if we'll see it here no another fastball and it's still 0 and 2 oh, it's what we talked about a similar case late in the season pitching against the New York Mets throws a great curveball of Daryl Strawberry and the next one goes off the clock which is about 450 feet to throw two fastballs by a guy in this situation you usually want to get beat with your best pitch one and two Another thing, when you've seen another team play for six games if you're doing your homework out in the bullpen which I'm sure Ken Daly's doing you know that Lonnie Smith's aggressive hitter. He is a high ball hitter, but when he swings through two fastballs, you know he will maybe go for another one. And down he goes. A foul tip on a check swing, and it's held by Porter. And Smith is angry, contending he did not foul tip it. And Ferraro has to sprint down from third to get the Smith away. Willie Wilson. Well, let's see if he didn't foul Tippett. Did he go around? Leads with the hands through the strike zone. He really went too far. I mean, it's a strike whether he fouled Tippett or not. Yep. And it wasn't that far out of the zone. Right. Wilson takes low. He might have been out on three counts. A half swing, a call strike, and a foul tip. But the frustration showing right there, and that's why he barked it quick. Two and zero on Wilson with Brett on deck. And you notice Pendleton off the line. It's just a matter of, as you see, George Brett on deck. Pendleton off the line. Jack Clark off the line. And they weren't playing Lonnie Smith off the line on the line either. One run ball game in the eighth. Well, it's a matter of philosophy. You know, when you think about it, if you play Willie Wilson on the line and he gets a single, chances of him stealing second base are great anyway. So, in effect, Wilson, a single is a double for him. So, playing off the line, in my opinion, is the proper thing to do now. Except, would a single be a double with Brett on deck in this situation? What with do you the, think? With the left-hander up. Well, that's an arguable point. Well, I don't think it would be because uh, you, you got to have a lot of guts to walk the uh, winning run to first base, <laughs> even if it's George Brett. That's a strike, and now it's three and two. Well, if you walk Brett to first base and Wilson steals, then you got Todd Worrell pitching to Frank White. A lot of things could happen depending on whether Wilson gets on or not, of course. And it's high, ball four. Woo, what a pitch to take, three and two. Oh, oh 
again than during the regular season. You just go down to first. Tonight we've been a lot of high strikes. Oh, Wilson knows that it's a ball. Would have done a complete snap if that was called a strike. George Brett. George Brett, the situation hitter. This situation, he's looking for a ball he can pull or a ball he can drive. And instead, he gets a picture perfect strike on the corner. George asking the umpire a lot of times, as we talked about earlier. A good hitter wants to know what the strike zone is. He said it got in the corner. He said, yep. So next time if it's out there, you're probably going to see him swing. Oh, and two. Lonnie Smith on all fastballs and two straight fastballs to Brett after throwing a 3-2 fastball to Willie Wilson. So he's going to stick with the heat, it appears. Well, it could be the Daryl Strawberry Syndrome. Some guys are fast learners. We talked about bat speed. You throw a fastball by a guy like Brett and come back with a hanging curveball, the chances are he's going to have one heck of a swing. And he struck him out. And did that silence the crowd? The anticipation and then the dead silence. Reggie Jackson and I were talking about this very thing before the ball game. The easiest pitch for a left-handed hitter to hit off a left-handed pitcher, all things considered equal, is a curveball. And that's why Powder River is usually your best pitch, because you don't give a left-handed hitter a chance to adjust to a pitch, whereas a curveball, you do. So Herzog has opted for Daly to stay in to face White because he knows what kind of stuff Ken has. He has Laurel throwing in the bullpen. Had Brett gotten on, as you look at Herzog, he had Laurel to come in to face the righty if he wanted him here. But Daly throwing so hard, Ooh. striking out Smith, striking out Brett, and nearly striking Wilson out. Whitey leaves him in to face the right-hand batter. And that's dialed back right back toward us. One and one. Alfalfa, you displayed some tremendous quickness. I do know how to get under the table. One ball, one strike to count. Two down, bottom of the eighth inning. One nothing Cardinals. Wilson in first base. Just a matter of time, one would think with two out, when Willie Wilson is going to run. Daryl Porter out to talk to Daly now. That also might be one of the reasons that Todd Worrell is not in there with Wilson at first base. Worrell does not have as good a move as the left-hander, and even though Daly hadn't thrown over there, the very fact that he's a left-hander has kept Wilson at first. Willie well, thought about going and hesitates, and it's a fly ball to center field and a lot of room for McGee, and we'll go to the ninth inning. Brian Harper is driving in the game's only run with a two-out single in the eighth. At the end of eight, one nothing, St. Louis. The essence of bobsledding. The new sled feels like gliding on silk. The essence of shaving. This is new Atra Plus, an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. The plus is the unique lubricating strip that glides the razor effortlessly. You never felt anything smoother. New Atra Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. Can a two-car couple run on a one-car budget? 
Today, Chevrolet has a way for two to run for the price of one. Sprint. Sprint's base sticker is less than half of today's average new car base sticker. And Sprint is nearly half the estimated annual fuel cost of the average new car sold in America. So if you're a two-car couple... On a one-car budget... Shouldn't at least one of them be a new Sprint? Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Chevy! When do you say L.A.? You know, I used to attend bar. And I've observed that sometimes, when you're having a good old time, it's possible to get a little carried away. That's why I like L.A. from Anheuser-Busch. L.A. tastes great and has just half the alcohol. And sometimes that's a darn good idea. Like my daddy used to say, the real trick to carrying on is not getting carried away. That's beautiful. L.A., sometimes it's the perfect thing to say. The Los Angeles Raiders, when it comes to playing on Monday nights, they have no equal. They'll battle the San Diego Chargers live at 9 Eastern, Monday on ABC. Beautiful shot of Royal Stadium and a reminder tomorrow morning at 10.30 Eastern and at 7.30 out on the left coast, the New York City Marathon on ABC. Ninth inning, one to nothing Cardinals. Tommy Herr to lead things off against Dan Quisenberry. Herr, Clark, and Landrum. And then in the bottom of the ninth inning, Sheridan is due up. But remember, with Daly in the game, you can forget about Sheridan if Daly stays in. Balboni and Sunberg to follow. Tommy Herr. Takes outside, ball one. One and no the count. One run, four hits, and no errors for the Cards. No run, seven hits, and no errors for the Royals. If the Cardinals do win and don't score more than one run here in the ninth inning, they will have gone 53 innings in the World Series with one multiple run inning the ninth in game two and won the world series and that's almost impossible and they'll be the first team since 1948 to have a player and that's tommy her who drove in over a hundred during the season and didn't respond during the world series with an rbi a lot of weird offensive yeah. stats after Ooh. this series if it remains the same of course two and one the count it's one of those series where the box scores in latter years won't mean anything. That's a broken bat bouncer down to Balboni for the out. What people will remember in this World Series ends tonight are some visual images that have nothing to do with the box scores. Brett going into the dugout would be one. And Liebrand going into the dugout. <laughs> oh, yes. Will be another. Absolutely. No asterisks to explain that maybe one of the reasons their ball club talking about Kansas City got here in the first place is because of the DH and 17 percent of their runs were scored by that position and they're absolutely no help from that position once they got here. Oh and one the count on Clark one out base is empty the Royals certainly have had their chances tonight and in fact George Brett has come up in a couple of situations where you want him up and just hasn't produced. <laughs> oh and to the count there is George who tonight struck out with a man at third in the first inning so we couldn't bring home Lonnie Smith with one out. He opened the fourth inning by flying out then he came up with Wilson aboard in the sixth inning and hit into a double play and they had him up there with Wilson on in the eighth inning. And one out, and he struck out. So they've had their chances and haven't cashed. They've left seven. And Clark is down on strike. So there are two down, and Landrum is the batter. If the Cardinals win, it would be their 10th World Series championship. And we pointed out earlier this week. Only the Yankees have won more, 22. The Royals have never won one. Born in 69, they lost a series in their only other appearance in 80.
the subject of visual images that will recall how about Landrum's performance the first couple of nights. The first four, in fact. How about Landrum's throw in game two? The two plays at the plate. Both very important. Actually, three in the plate, at the plate. Brett Hicks, Saberhagen in the dugout. Oh, yeah. Asking how Janine is. Mm -hmm. That's a little squibber, and Brett lets it roll and falls down. Slipping down, it turns out to be a foul ball. John Tudor, he's so stoic that his performance and his face as you watch Brett fall down doesn't lend itself to remembering through the years Tudor's performance, but what he has done really speaks for itself. He's worked 15 and two-thirds innings, and he's 2-0 against the Royals. One ball, two strikes the count. And that's a little number, and Sunberg will have to play this one, throw, and doesn't get him. Landrum beats it out. Pounds it into the ground. It's going to be a great play by Sunberg, but it also illustrates that Landrum can run. Right on the money. Beats it by a half a step. Can't make that play much better if you're a catcher. Now Pendleton, whose base hit with one out in the eighth inning, led to the Cardinal run. He singled, Cedeno walked, and then with two out and two strikes, Harper softly singled the center. <laughs> The running situation for the Cardinals. Got to pick up that extra run. Yeah, the yardstick to almost to see where the runner is going is whether his right foot is out on the carpet. Landrum just about there, but not quite. Fly ball to center field. <laughs> Quisenberry does his job, and the Royals have three outs in the bottom of the ninth inning to work with. One nothing St. Louis after eight and a half. Competition is what makes American business go. Competition is what makes American business excel. Competition is what gives meaning to success. Competition is what drives Hilton to be America's business address. If I thought that no one cared about the things I do in life, well, I'd still care about working hard and making it turn out right. Made in America, that means a lot to me. Oh, I believe in America and American quality. personal commitment to quality that has kept our family of beers the finest in the world for over a hundred years. Here's to you, America, my best I give to you. Somebody still cares about quality. Anheuser-Busch. Tuesday. Pretty dress. Well, thank you. Hi, Wally. Angela's date falls for Mona. What a great sweater. Who's the boss returns Tuesday. In the bottom of the ninth inning with Ken Daly working for St. Louis, Darryl Motley, the right-hand batter, will lead things off. Then Balboni and Sunberg. 
In the bullpen, the Cardinals with their two right-handers, Todd Worrell on the left and Jeff Lahey on the right. One to nothing, St. Louis. The Cardinals three outs away from giving Whitey Herzog a second world championship in four seasons. And time is called right now as Herzog, after the announcement is made that Motley is in the game, walks to the mound. And he wants the right-hander. So with Motley in the game, he wanted to make sure he was announced. And he wants Worrell, who struck out the six men he faced in game five. And we can tell you, since we have a, a moment, this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. Todd Worrell, and the story is well known now, but it's, it's worth repeating under these circumstances. You begin the season in AAA in Louisville, Kentucky, in the American Association as daily departs and you're pitching in the minors and you're not traveling first class or charter and you're not staying in real good hotels and you're not eating real good food because your meal money won't cover it and somebody says in the middle of the season we want to make a relief pitcher and then all of a sudden you get called up in August and here you are trying to win the World Series. I spoke with him earlier. In your role right now, and the type of pitcher you are, a power pitcher, do you come into the game just seeking an out, or do you come in seeking a strikeout? It depends on the situation. Uh, being a power pitcher, and especially the situation I, I was in the last time I, I pitched in uh, Cardinal Stadium, I wasn't going for strikeouts. Uh, you know, we were down four to one. My main concern was shutting the door on the Royals and trying to give our guys a chance to rally on three runs. Uh, you know, we really, I really couldn't afford to let them have another one or two runs, else that, you know, Jackson was pitching a great game. You know, he deserved a lot of credit for his performance, and I knew if they got any farther ahead, we wouldn't catch him because we were late in the game. So. I was just trying to shut him down, and the next thing I know, uh, you know, I struck out the side and come out again and did the same thing again. Well, he got the save in game one. To me, it, it, you're right, Al, it is amazing. Of course, I have to give a lot of credit, and apparently the credit goes to Jim Fergosi, who managed him at Louisville, made him into a short man. The other night we saw a fastball right there with Goose Gossage's fastball, 96 miles per hour. He did a lot what we saw Daly do last inning. He came in and threw his fastball. I talked to him. I said, what do you, you know, he says, I don't want to stomp around the mound like Al Rabowski did. I don't want to look fearsome. All I want to do is let the hitter know that I'm in control of the situation. Four to one behind. One to nothing tonight. A little different situation. We'll see how he handles it. Meanwhile, George Orda will pinch hit for Motley. So here's an inning that hasn't even started, and we've had three changes. A pinch hitter, a new pitcher, and then a pinch hitter for the pinch hitter. Orda looks at a strike on the outer hand. Now Boney on deck, and then Sunberg. Oh, and two. Nobody has ever struck out seven straight over two games in the history of the World Series, and Worrell is a strike away from doing that. Well, he has tremendous poise. When you talk about poise, especially about a young pitcher, you're talking about the ability to throw your stuff over the plate. So far in this World Series, all year he's been able to do it. Pop foul and curling back out of play will be in about 12 rows. Sparky Anderson, the Tiger manager, interviewing Worrell on Good Morning America the other day, ended the interview and I loved it. He said, Todd, thank God you're in the National League and stay there. Little squibber to the right side. Worrell races over to cover the throw. Doesn't get him. Worrell got to the bag in an argument here, and here comes Herzog amongst the other quartet. First base umpire is thanking the American League. Well, this 
this is spring training all over again. Any ball to the right side, you get there as quick as you can. I think he tries to go for the ball, and his argument is he gets the side of the bag. Looks like he's out from that angle. Let's take a look from this one. Again, Clark with the, the toss. Oh, yes. Put right on top of the bag. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Only in one person's mind. So Orta gets on, and Balboni is at the plate. Balboni has singled, flied out, and walked. You're in a, a funny situation here, too. Here's your power guy, but in a bunch situation, really. Well, the, the classic line is you play to win on the road and tie at home, but only again. A manager's job is to work within the limitations of his player. And I'm not sure if Steve Balboni can bunt. And the Cardinals don't expect him to. He pops it up in foul ground, and Clark comes over to the dugout with Porter, and Clark doesn't know where he is and can't make the play. And what's happening in the ninth inning, and you can see the shoulder hunch, Clark has spent his whole career in right field. He has made a pretty good adjustment to first base, but he came off the bag, and I'm not saying he made the mistake on the Motley ball, but he's been involved now in the first two plays of the ninth inning. Well, the mistake he makes is looking at Porter. By then, the ball is back over his head. Talked to him before the series. He said he really hasn't felt comfortable at first base, especially on throwing. There is another example. 0-2, oh and, and Balboni trying to hit that one onto the freeway. And having the capabilities of doing that. We talked about the 96-mile-per-hour fastball. He also has an excellent slider, but he said in this situation, if you're going to get beat, and a home run will beat him, he said you got to go with number one. Let's see if he does it. Matt Gray on deck. Stops at second. goes into pinch run. McRae had been out on deck. Now Sunberg returns to the on-deck circle. There is the pinch runner. Herzog has the two in the bullpen. Horton, the lefty, who took Laurel's place out there, and the right-hander, Lottie. So first and second, not only talking to Laurel, but talking about the butt. He's going to leave him in as they discuss situation here, and McRae had come out on deck to bat for Sunberg, but in this situation, what Hauser is telling you is that Sunberg's a good bunter, and he's gonna try to get him along, and he's gonna save McRae. Now, when you do bunt, and if Sunberg's successful, then Whitey can play his little game. They send McRae up, you can walk him, Again, the winning run is at first base. Clark creeps in. So does Pendleton. Outside. Beyond Kalana do up next. Well, Tim McCarver been, has been talking all World Series about the difficulty of bunting on artificial turf. Take a look at the infielders when the pitch goes across home plate. They will be about 15 feet from home plate, trying to get that force at third. That's outside, and it's 2 and oh. You almost want Jim Sundberg to be able to punt. Hasn't been 
too many low strikes all night. What a human elephant now comes into the ball game. If you're Todd Worrell, you want Jim Sundberg to bunt the ball, but sometimes you just can't get the ball over home plate. He bunts in the air, foul, and Porter can't make the play. And a break for Sundberg as he pops it up back to the screen. And that's one thing about a fastball coming in at 92 or 93 miles per hour, you will pop him far back. Well, especially if it's up in the strike zone. And they tell you, of course, there's conflicting philosophies. If the guy squares around a bunt, he's more apt to pop up the high pitch. Squares, he bunts to Clark, who lets it roll foul, and the count is two and two. So Order returns to second, Concepcion to first. Clark that time, you could almost sense it in his mind, wasn't quite sure what he was going to do with it for a second. Well, another illustration of his inexperience in first place, excuse me, at first base. Two and two. Sundberg really compelled to swing away, though Pendleton remains shallow at third. Now he starts to back up. But he's going to bunt with two strikes. Lays it down. Worrell looks at third, throws, and gets him on a close play at third. And that couldn't be any closer. So the play goes 1-5, one, one out, Orta comes off, and McRae will come up. Not a very good bunt, almost right back to Worrell, who breaks the wrong way. Again, no hesitation. Mm, good call. Jim McKean, American League, calling that one. Once again, not by much, but he was out. All right, now McRae. The designated hitter pinch hits for Biancolano. Hal came up the other night and grounded out with the bases loaded in St. Louis. Tudor the other night swing at a very low pitch. Base is loaded. He's going to try to be a little more selective. signs mixed up. Looked like Porter's looking fastball. And you can see the four fingers held up by Hal Lanier indicating he doesn't have to hold up four. He only has to hold up two because the count's already two and up. So they'll walk McRae and Dean Orge is out on deck to pinch hit. This is some boring World Series, isn't it? Question in my mind is or 
Pitch comes up. Will Herzog come out? Whitey, back of Lanier. Mike Bork, trainer Gene Gieselman. Lanier signaling to the infielders as they align themselves here. Orge, a Cardinal in the 1982 World Series, and he had a terrific World Series. 529. The infield. Double play depth short and second, and up at the corner. And there it is visually for you. The play is if it's hit the first or third, you're coming home. To get the tying run, it's hit to the middle infielders. Most likely they'll try for two unless the only play they have is at the plate. Concepcion at third, Sunberg at second. Low ball one. John Watson is the runner at first base running for McRae. He's important too because of force play. There he is. A force at second. Could be a big play. cylinder engines have changed. They work harder than ever, even when they're just idling. But watch this. Even after 7,500 miles at top speed in a four-cylinder engine, new Valvoline four-guard motor oil showed no significant breakdown. None. New Valvoline four-guard. It helps your four-cylinder engine keep up the hard work. Until this time, until this tape, you've never seen color this bold. A breakthrough in videotape technology. Color as if you were seeing it for the first time, time after time. 
color is why the world watches Scotch. The new Scotch EXG video cassette, guaranteed for your lifetime. For a limited time, Wendy's Breakfast is yours for a song. Only Wendy's. Wendy's French Toast is now 99 cents. Ninety-nine cents for a scrambled egg platter, too. Only Wendy's and Wendy's alone. Our breakfast sandwich, ninety-nine cents. Wendy's breakfast, yours for a song. For only you. A sea of humanity, and yet one is all alone. The run of a lifetime. The New York City Marathon, live tomorrow on ABC Sports. Let's go to Reggie Jackson. Dane, Dane Orge, for me, please describe your attitude and describe your feeling about the base hit. Well, I'll tell you exactly what went through my mind. It's how many kids get an opportunity to hit in that situation. I've dreamed about that all my life, and to be up there and to actually go through it, it was a thrill. I will say that you might have thought about being a kid or thought about kids, but you certainly did a man's job. What happened to your nose? Well, Mike Jones came running in the pile and drilled me in the nose and bloodied my nose, but uh, I'll take it anytime I can get a hit like take that. Take a bloody nose like that all the time. Anytime, anytime. Dick Hauser, please tell me about your Kansas City Royals. They just seem to keep coming back. That's unbelievable. Reggie, you know, Charlie pitched one of his better games again. I was going to say he was snake bit, but he really wasn't. He kept us in there. He pitched a heck of a ball game. Nobody's out pitching us in this series. And when, it, when we got down the last inning, we had some old pros over there. <laughs> George Arda, Hal McCray, Dane Orge, and a few more, Lynn Jones. So we were only down one run. We had our, you know, it, we weren't in bad shape, really. Dick, tell me about your decision to leave in Charlie Lee Brent. Yeah, it's just he's pitching so good, Reggie. Guys, you, you send a pinch hitter up there. They did it. They, they got a base hit with two outs. But the way Charlie's pitching, we're going to win the ball game with Charlie Lee Brent. He did a great job. If you send somebody up there hit, that's no guarantee he's going to get a base hit. Let me ask you this. What do you think about tomorrow now? Well, all the excitement up today, can you get any higher? Energy, that's the way it's supposed to be. Brett Saberhagen and John Tudor, two 20-game winners. It'll be a great ball game. Thank you very much, Dick Hauser. Thank you very much, Dane Orge. Fantastic, yeah. my friend. Tell me this. You felt snake bit. You were having some problems. You just couldn't seem to get a break. You were sitting up in the clubhouse watching. I was in the clubhouse. You were the only guy that was absolutely quiet until one time you yelled and mentioned that to me. Well, we just have had so many bad breaks in this series. We just haven't seemed to come up with a clutch hit or the clutch pitching. I know I pitched well, but I just haven't been able to come up with a clutch out late in the ball game. And uh, we certainly did it tonight. Uh, I think the, the right. thing has turned around for us, and uh, we got a couple of clutch hits to start the inning off, and Dane Archer is just terrific. And uh, we're going to save for this one to come out and play as hard as we can tomorrow night. I guess you can finally say that the Kansas City Royals have deserved one, Al. What more can you say? Momentum? Let's go back to Al. All we can say is that the baseball season will end tomorrow. Guaranteed. <laughs> Game seven. As you look at the line score and totals of Game six, Tudor and Saberhagen, and we'll be back in a moment. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized... Well, we're back, and Game 6 is history. They were talking about this not being a terrifically exciting World Series. It was a thrilling game tonight, and what a, an unbelievable way for the season to end tomorrow. The two top pitchers and the two teams going right down to the end. And an ex-Cardinal who got the game-winning hit with the bases loaded and one out. And there he is, Dane Orge, on your screen. I'll tell you, an interesting thought occurred to me. Charlie Liebrandt is probably the most valuable Royal at this time, and he's 0-1 with one no decision. <laughs> He has performed probably better, and that's an arguable point. Of course, Frank White's been hitting well. Oh, he's certainly done a great job. Backs to the wall. I think they carried it just about as far as you could carry it. <laughs> and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Hamburger places think they can become chicken experts overnight. And even though they may make chicken nuggets, it's not that easy to get chicken right. At Kentucky Fried Chicken, our nuggets have our secret blend of 11 herbs and spices, so they taste great. In fact, people who said they've ever tried Kentucky Nuggets and McDonald's Chicken Nuggets rated ours higher on taste. 
So try the nuggets from the chicken experts. Anyone else could be just winging it. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. The other night it started right. The kids were all asleep. So I snuffed up my favorite chips and I did not make a peep. I got in bed and then I said, baby, what's on TV? Knock, knock, who's that? Can we cap who has the ruffles too? Everybody wants my ruffles, ruffles, red potato chips. Everybody wants some bridges, wants some action, wants some ruffles, satisfaction. Everybody wants my ruffles, red potato chips. I drink milk. I ask a lot of my body. Milk has things my body needs. Calcium, riboflavin, zinc, powerful nutrition. Without a lot of calories. And even if you don't expect your body to do 100 meters in 50 flat, think about all you do expect it to do. Milk, it does a body good. The U.S., the USSR, advancing toward an historic meeting, positioning their pieces. Reagan and Gorbachev in Geneva. Follow the moves to the summit with ABC News. Here's the play again now with Orge at the plate and all of the action taking place at the plate. Once again, Van Slyke in for defense. Knows he cannot get the tying run, but watch this throw. Right on the money, Sunberg is not fast, but he does know how to slide. There's no doubt about that. Another angle. Again, Porter gives him the outside of the plate, and he takes it. Dane Orge, his reaction. Here's his wife in a live shot. Kay, she'll be here, and so will 41,000 others tomorrow for Game 7. We'll be back. Cheese, glorious cheese. So sumptuous and luscious. Cheese, marvelous cheese. Makes everything scrumptious. More exciting new ways to make your meals sing. Come on into your grocers today. Get new cheese ideas and a great variety of real cheeses that'll get you cooking. Glorious cheese. Make your meals sing with real cheese. It's supercharged. The new Energizer AA battery. It's America's newest bundle of energy. Supercharged, like you, Mary Lou. This new Energizer AA is the longest-lasting Energizer ever. Supercharged to give you power no other battery in the world can be. Tell them, Mary Lou. Remember, you only get out of it what you put into it. So energize it. Nothing beats the mighty new Energizer. Now supercharged. A double pleasure is waiting for you. A double pleasure for double this gum. A double great feeling, making you realize double is the one for you. Double fresh, double smooth, double delicious to chew. A double pleasure is waiting for you. Double gum. A double pleasure is waiting for you. Double gum. And our thanks to Alan Roth, to Steve Hurt, Al Michaels, for Jim Palmer, Tim McCarver, Reggie Jackson. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 Eastern. Again, the final score, 2-1, to one, Kansas City. Stay tuned for ABC News, the weekend report over most of these ABC stations, except on the West Coast, where it will be seen in its regularly scheduled time. ABC's exclusive presentation of the 1985 World Series has been brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to live the style, performance, and fun of Chevrolet in 86. By the Anheuser-Busch family of beers, somebody still cares about quality. By the people at Merrill Lynch whose resources and solutions make them a breed apart. And by Prestone, two antifreeze, America goes with Prestone. 
Be sure to join ABC Sports tomorrow for a full lineup of action. We begin in the morning live at 10.30 Eastern Time. We start to finish coverage of the New York City Marathon. Later, 3 Eastern Time for golf at the conclusion of the Tucson Match Play Championship. And finally, at 8 Eastern Time, the seventh game of the World Series. John Tudor for St. Louis, Brett Saberhagen for Kansas City. Travel arrangements made through a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United is the only airline to serve all 50 states. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.